the start, but I was started saying Gene. From Meteorologist Trey Tonneson alongside meteorologist Chase Ward and me Chief Meteorologist Jared Floyd has now uh, entered the studio, so he will be on momentarily uh, to join us for tornado coverage. But firstly, we want to draw your attention down to the southwest area of our viewing area once again. Um, and uh, Chase is uh, out at the computer once again. But as we notice this notch in the storm down just to the north of Gina, this is the storm that cut off the inflow from the storm that provoked the tornado warning we were on previously. And as this happens, kind of out by itself and able to develop its own inflow in this storm due to that has developed a, a kink in the line here and as that's happened a rotation has increased ever so slightly and as that happens we'll continue to monitor for rotation increasing with this particular storm. Now uh, if we want to go to velocity here quickly I'll put us in velocity mode and take a look at the winds and as we take a look at those uh, we'll notice uh, just a moment ago you see how you see some decent increase in the winds here the winds starting to kind of uh, ramp up just a little bit and you see those reds and greens kind of coming together not necessarily aggressively but uh, as that happens we'll notice that uh, that indicates and here we go with the uh, once again the, I, uh, I got it Trey we're gonna we're gonna turn hand tracker off for a second and and, uh, and Chase will get you back home uh, uh, here shortly and 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 we'll get to uh, kind of get this uh, this computer squared away we can go back over to links too real quick if we would like um, but um, th there's uh, a look at uh, what we're dealing with currently. A tornado warning has been issued. Uh, this is for central and uh, northeastern sections of LaSalle Parish and uh, live storm tracker Doppler radar kind of showing it there. Uh, as, as Trey mentioned, generally north of Highway 84, um, in and around Gina, generally north of Gina now, uh, and will continue to move off to the north and east. This has been a um, uh, needless to say, a, a very odd day in terms of um, uh, tornado coverage in, in our area. Trey, you can go ahead and step off if you'd like. For sure. Uh, but uh, again, uh, in, in our area, we have not seen um, a whole lot of significant severe weather um, signatures in terms of widespread severe weather. It's been these isolated cells that continue to pop up. And, uh, and, and we're really tracking this one storm uh, right along uh, Highway uh, 84, just north of Highway 84. Live storm tracker Doppler radar still showing that uh, the reds and greens kind of clustered together. And uh, that's where we are, are concerned about a possible tornado forming just to the north of Gina and trailing off to the north and east. I'm going to step off the screen for just a second so we can uh, take a closer look at some of what these storms are doing. Uh, but uh, again, we've had numerous tornado warnings. Chase and Trey have been on air with you for most of the morning as uh, we've been talking about these uh, little brief tornadoes uh, or brief possible tornadoes and a tornado watch has been issued for a good chunk of the area till 5 p.m. tonight. Uh, so again, just uh, keep in mind that uh, we, we are starting to kind of see the severe weather threat to a point that it warrants a watch. And again, we've been having tornado warnings since 7, 8 o'clock last night and, uh, and, and along with that, uh, now we've started to kind of add enough of a threat in our area to warn a tornado watch. So again, we're tracking this one uh, possible tornado. There's numerous severe thunderstorm warnings out across the region as well. Um, and, it, and I want to zoom out real quickly and kind of get to those. But uh, again, severe thunderstorm warning for Wind Parish, where we can see some 60 mile an hour wind gusts. That also includes southeastern or southwestern sections of Jackson Parish. And then the tornado warned storm itself also has a severe thunderstorm warning that extends into southern Caldwell Parish. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind as uh, we progress through uh, the rest of um, uh, th this late morning hours. I'm going to switch back over here to another computer. Chase, uh, obviously you've you've continued to do. Can you read the status message from the National Weather Service on that? Yes. On that warning. So the tr the National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for LaSalle Parish. Uh, at the severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over Midway and 26 miles northwest of Larto, moving towards the northeast about 20 miles per hour. And this is radar indicated. It's not been a spot or confirmed this on the ground or anything. However, this is the reason why we're kind of cutting into live programming because yep. the only tornado warning we have right now in the viewing area, but we still have multiple severe thunderstorm warnings that are starting to fire up across 
portions of our viewing area. All right, and then for you guys' uh, reference, hand tracker's now on on two, so we'll, okay. um, we'll run on links two for just a little bit, but again, a check of live storm tracker Doppler radar kind of shows uh, what we've been dealing with through much of the morning hours. And uh, again, a lot of these areas continuing to run into at times. Well, all right, hand tracker apparently not working on this computer either. But uh, uh, again, at times we've continued to see these brief areas of rotation. Um, almost tropical like and we talked about that last night at this uh, uh, at one point um, when we were doing our Facebook live coverage uh, kind of discussing um, what we were going to be dealing with in terms of any kind of isolated tornado threat it, that it would be almost tropical like in nature that these would be relatively short-lived cells that bring these possible tornadoes. As you look at, uh, I've zoomed in quite a bit on live storm tracker Doppler radar, this possible tornado is kind of northeast of Gina. Uh, I see Artie Road and Greens Creek Road. They're on the southeast side of this warning polygon. If those roads sound familiar, make sure that you make a call to uh, family and friends and make sure that they know that a possible tornado uh, is headed their way. This is gonna be kind of southeast of the Somerville uh, community. If you look on the far left hand side of your screen, uh, it, you can, and, and again, you guys can see it as well. It, it, there's your yeah, little. This li particular yeah. storm, it's moving just to the east of Somerville with the area of rotation that we're yep. currently looking at right now. It's north of Gina. Gina is on the back side of this area of rotation. It's not a strong area, but it's uh -uh. enough to indicate a potential uh, spin up right here. It's moving just to the east of Somerville, a long Pine Hill Road. Right. Moving across, I would say it's Arty Road right there. Yeah, and I don't want to be over, too overly specific in these areas, but again, if you're in the warning polygon, uh, from Somerville northeastward in the flashing red box that you see here on your screen. This is where our possible tornado would be. And again, I know it doesn't look like much. If you followed our tornado warning coverage, if you followed uh, Alex last night, uh, when we had the tornado warnings in Union County and Union Parish, those were very, very small storms, compact, low topped, meaning they're not building high in the environment. So uh, there's not much to these storms, but there's such a heightened amount of wind shear in the environment doesn't take much for these storms to get spinning. There's a lot of low level moisture. And, and so these storms can kind of feed off of all of this moisture in the environment. As I mentioned, almost tropical like when we have those brief tornadoes that spin up in a land falling hurricane, this is not a land falling tropical system. But because of the tropical nature of the environment, there's these low top supercell structures that can provide some low spin in the environment. And we've had a few areas of rotation. I had videos sent from us last night uh, from some of the storms that we dealt with earlier. And I would say, and you guys have been dealing with this most of the morning, uh, Trey, specifically, this has been basically what you guys have been dealing with for most of the morning. Absolutely. And and it's just kind of interesting to note that the storm or the cell that is warned at the moment is the cell we were last looking at when we uh, left you and sent you back to programming before, but we noted that it was kind of catching up to that storm right above it, which was the previously tornado warned right. storm, and now it's kind of out by itself, if you will, and kind of can draw in quite a bit of that warm, humid, and moist air out of the south, which is also not a lot of that has been rain cooled, so that's allowing for that storm to continue at least for the moment and that's why most likely the other circulation was cut off beforehand but unless we see something below the storm there's no reason for it to uh, just flat out fall apart at least at the moment yeah at least here yeah I would agree with you at least here in the short term um, you know it's gonna eventually run into an environment to its north and east that's probably a little less favorable it's probably a little worked over uh, from some of the rain that we've seen earlier but again as you as you join us on social media or wherever you're joining us currently uh, we're we're, we're zoomed into a tornado warned storm uh, that's moving through portions of central LaSalle Parish. Uh, this tornado warning goes, I believe, to what, 11 o'clock? This is actually running until about 1030. So okay, so we only got five more minutes on it. Hang on, sorry. The tornado, that was the, the severe thunderstorm warning runs till 1030. The tornado warning runs to at least 1045. So okay. we have at least another 25 minutes before this warning expires, but the severe thunderstorm warning is set to expire within the next five minutes. Again, there would be our possible tornado right here. You, we talk about hook echoes all the time. Well, we don't talk about a lot because we don't see them traditionally in our area very often. But when you hear about tornadoes a lot and you hear about the rotating hook echo, that comma on screen, this is about as close as you could get to uh, a supercell with a hook echo, if you will, in this type of environment. And it would be a possible tornado right 
in that area right here, trailing off to the north and east. And again, uh, this is a relatively small and relatively rural section of uh, LaSalle Parish. Once you get north of Gina, um, the, the, you know, there's, there, the population drops a little bit, but I just want folks to be uh, in, in, sheltered in their homes. Uh, areas north of Kirby Lane, if these areas sound familiar to you, you need to be in your safe place, interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible, and protect yourself from flying debris. Um, Something to go ahead, add, guys. Something to add to it. So the National Weather Service is currently watching this particular sale moving through LaSalle Parish, and this is from the Jackson Weather Service in Mississippi. They're watching this storm in particular, and there's a possibility they might extend it into Catahoula Parish because there's not really any signs of it potentially weakening, and so there's a possibility that might get extended. If that's the case, it will move into northern sections of Catahoula Parish, and that will impact the communities about Sherwood, Spring Ridge, Enterprise, Rosefield. You guys are and really particular in the path if the polygon were to get extended. Yeah, and the other thing to keep in mind in, in kind of in that same breath is that the National Weather Service in Shreveport has issued this severe, uh, this uh, tornado warning and their county warning area or jurisdiction is basically what you would call it, ends at LaSalle Parish. So if a new warning is gonna be issued, it's gonna to have to be from the National Weather Service in Jackson as it moves into Catahoula Parish, which is the start of their county warning area. So again, it's kind of almost uh, housekeeping measures to, to keep track of that. And, and so I just want folks to be uh, aware that a, a new tornado warning may be needed. And, and as we zoom in, um, north of Artie Road, near the north of the Routon community in um, central and northeastern sections of LaSalle Parish. That's, that's where we're running into issues right now. Yeah, Jared, and uh, if you notice the yellow polygon, it's a lot larger than the tornado warning. Right. They've decided to extend the severe thunderstorm warning out ahead of this particular tornado warning and the tornado warning polygon. This is just a kind of a precursor, as they're saying in the National Weather Service chat. They're just putting it out ahead because not only are you going to see those severe thunderstorm capable winds and potentially some hail and torrential rain, but then following that, that's when you could see that potential circulation roll through on the backside. So now the severe thunderstorm and tornado warning both encompassed in that large polygon. All right. I'm just gonna do a little storm track on this particular, because starting to exit, um, the outer edge of that particular uh, tornado warning that was issued. So yeah. just drawing it out a little bit, um, again, there's not a whole lot of communities in this area. It's very rural in yep. this part of Louisiana and part of our coverage area. So again, not a whole lot is popping up. There's so there, there they go. They just ex extended the severe thunderstorm warning to include parts of LaSalle, uh, LaSalle Parish well, they will continue that. Hey, one little piece of good news to go along with that is that they have issued a severe thunderstorm uh, warning instead of a tornado warning, uh, meaning that in the thought process that the, you know this this storm may have weakened to a point where it may drop below severe limits. The area that I have circled right now on screen that you're seeing there would be our possible tornado, and I know that uh, um, for a lot of areas it's it's just a zoomed in box and it's tough to see. So I'm going to zoom in zoom out a little bit and kind of give you that point of reference. As, as Chase just mentioned, this is a relatively rural part of uh, LaSalle Parish moving into Northern Catahoula Parish, but we treat every warning the same, whether it's for three people or whether it's for you know 300,000 people, you just want folks to be sheltered. And so this little purple circled area is where our possible tornado is. Remember the warning originated in and around Gina and has continued to trail off to the north and east. Uh, and, and again, the new severe thunderstorm warning, which Chase had just mentioned, that also stretches into portions of Catahoula Parish, it stretches into Franklin Parish, uh, may even clip Actually, it looks like it's all just Catahoula and Franklin Parish so at this point. So the new severe thunderstorm warning that's just been issued is for Franklin and uh, Catahoula Parish, and it okay. goes until at least 11:45 this morning. You see, the latest severe thunderstorm warning, the one that went until 10:30, has been allowed to drop off. So now the focus is on the tornado worn storm trailing off to the north and east. Whether this is producing a tornado right now tough to tell, but the, the structure is still there. Um, it, it still has that little comma hook tail whatever you want to call it on the back edge and that could allow for some some spin there in the environment and, and and as Trey mentioned there's really not a whole lot out there impeding it here in the short term so uh, again if the warning is uh, in effect for your area uh, generally speaking this is a, a pretty small 
region in terms of tornado warnings. I mean, I, I zoom out to kind of give it a point of reference. The other thing that Trey was just pointing out was rainfall totals in some of these spots. It's a tropical like environment, so that brings a completely different set of problems. So while we have the tornado warning that's still in effect again until 11 o'clock for LaSalle Parish, uh, excuse me, till 1045 for LaSalle Parish. Trey, uh, possibility of some areas picking up two, three, four inches of rain and isolated higher amounts can't be ruled out either. Uh, correct. And uh, we just got what the National Weather Service calls a mesoscale discussion, which basically in simple terms means they issued a discussion about a smaller portion of the area. And this portion includes most of the Arklamas, mainly north central Louisiana. But they're noting that we could receive across the area up to uh, six inches or above in rainfall from here through at least the mid afternoon. And also with that, speaking about rainfall, I want to make it quick because we want to focus on that tornado warning. But there are reports of businesses in southern Arkansas seeing enough rainfall already, uh, enough that rainfall and water is coming up through the doors of businesses. So already quite a bit of <coughs> rainfall. I definitely, if you don't have to get out, please don't try to traverse the roadways, especially during a storm as it's already super saturated. All right, thanks, Trey. And, and that's, a, a, again, good piece of advice because there are um, a lot of areas that have seen um, isolated but very heavy amounts of rain uh, here in the short term. So while that, again, is not necessarily the primary concern with the tornado warned storm that's in effect, it is, it is certainly a more widespread threat. Go ahead, Chase. Uh, something to add just off what Trey was mentioning, you know, we have more than just the tornado warning and the severe thunderstorm warning. The Weather Service has already put out new bulletins. Union County and Union Parish radar estimates of at least two to three inches of rainfall has already fallen in just mm. a very short period of time in those areas around El Dorado and, and parts of Union Parish. So fl flash flooding is no doubt going to be a concern. And a lot of all these storms start to make their way across. A lot of those area. spots have already seen two, three inches of rain this week. So you, you tack on another two or three inches of rain in an hour or two hours time. And and for folks in El Dorado, you, you know the areas that, that are prone to flooding. Be mindful of those spots, avoid them if you can, and uh, find an alternate route. Uh, again, our possible tornado as it approaches kind of the end of this warning polygon will be moving closer to the Aimwell community in Catahoula Parish, uh, right along the uh, LaSalle Catahoula line. This is the, the parish line, if you will. Uh, Aimwell and Pritchard are back behind me, and uh, you can see Webb and Manifest in the lo uh, lower part of your screen. Uh, and this, again, continues to relatively move in rural sections of the parishes. Go ahead, Trey. Uh, and I knew you mentioned the uh, storm kind of out, about to outrun the polygon there, but just as you mentioned that, it's perfect timing. Was, I'm not sure if you mentioned it already. I was kind of zoned in on something on the Weather Service chat, but uh, they are going to continue the tornado warning. It says that uh, that severe thunderstorm still capable of producing a tornado. Radar indicated as located near Gina, 24 miles south of Columbia, moving northeast at 20 miles per hour. So, okay, that's that is the uh, that's just the the retrans updated message from the weather. Okay, service in so they're just they're just transcribing yeah. it. Yeah, so okay. that's that's gotcha. the update. That's why you see uh, part of the warning has been trimmed away um, on the southwestern edge, and now it's kind of more of a of a okay, you know, that makes odd, you know. Uh, rectangle, if you will, and so it, it, they've trimmed that part of the tornado warning away uh, just to basically let folks know in Gina that you are no longer under that tornado warning, but uh, you can still see this area of rotation. I know we keep bouncing from different radar modes to different radar modes, but just trying to get the best vantage point of uh, this storm as it continues to trail off to the north and east and this purple circled area that we have uh, would be our possible tornado as it moves uh, ever so closely to the parish line and will eventually move into northwestern sections of uh, Catahoula Parish. But uh, again, generally speaking, the, the, the area of rotation that we were talking about earlier looks a little bit more um, disheveled and, and, and a little bit more disorganized. But that said, most of our severe weather or tornado signatures that we've seen over the last couple of days really haven't or over the last couple of hours really haven't been overly impressive. They've been brief and weak and, and, and very limited in their overall scope uh, in our area. So again, tornado watch is in effect till five o'clock. Um, uh, that, that is a relatively new tornado watch in the grand scheme of things. Uh, as we approach uh, 10 minutes left on this uh, tornado warning, may need another one soon, but uh, again, just want folks sheltered safe place away from your windows, uh, away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible uh, if you're under this tornado warning. And it's really starting to look like, again, they're still monitoring the situation 
coming out of LaSalle Parish into Catahoula Parish right now. And if they were to continue that, that will be part of that severe thunderstorm warning that extends into Catahoula going into Franklin Parish right there. That includes the areas of Winsboro, Gilbert, and uh, Wisner right there. Wisner, yeah. Wisner. And they're included in the severe thunderstorm warning where winds have been indicated by radar to produce 60 mile per hour wind gusts, which you know, can still be as damaging as a EF zero tornado. Sure. Don't just think that, you know, the tornado warning is not it for us. That doesn't mean anything. All right, severe thunderstorm warning can still cause just enough damage as a typical small tornado can. Right. Even though that tornado might be weakening, the storm itself still has enough strength. There's still enough shear at the top of the atmosphere that's fueling these storms as they're making their way across southern sections of our viewing area. And we could still even see uh, some more possible activity going on. There's a lot more heavier rainfall occurring in Union Parish right now. I've been watching that particularly. Uh, a lot of purple coming out of this one particular cell near Farmerville. So again, watching a lot of these storms right now, there's only one active tornado warning and it will probably expire uh, before uh, the shortly before the top of the hour. It expires at 1045, so it's gonna expire within the next seven to eight minutes, but it could possibly be extended into Northern Catahoula Pair. So again, if you live within the area that we were talking about earlier around nickel that's where the current tornado is and there's still some indications of a little rotation near the nickel area mm -hmm. so if you live in that area you need to be in your tornado safe place yeah if you live in the sherwood spring ridge area you're not under a tornado warning but you're you are under the severe thunderstorm warning and this area of rotation is moving towards your direction and it'll be there within the next five to ten minutes so, so we'll, you may want to move to your safe place as well just yeah to be on the safe kind place. of preemptively just getting folks to their safe places i really wouldn't be surprised with the makeup that we have of this storm right now for a new tornado warning to be needed farther to the north and east. I think the National Weather Service in Jackson is going to need a new tornado warning for the same areas that that Chase just called out. Well, Spring Ridge, Sherwood communities all in northwestern sections of Catahoula Parish. We're going to go ahead and give you the heads up now. Get to your safe place, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. You're not under a tornado warning, but you will likely be under a tornado warning very, very shortly. I would expect uh, a tornado warning to be issued uh, probably until 1115, 1130. That will extend into northern sections of Catahoula Parish. Again, it will include Spring Ridge, Sherwood and Aimwell. Likely again, I wouldn't I, the, the tornado warning has not been issued yet, but again, just considering the overall scope and the structure of this storm, I would expect a tornado warning to be issued very, very shortly uh, for portions of uh, Catahoula and Concordia parishes. I'm going to zoom back out and we're going to go back to our traditional radar mode uh, just so folks can kind of get their bearings uh, on where we are in the area. Go ahead, Trey. Uh, I, I'm not going to touch on it again for a bit, but uh, just because we had the tornado warning, but I think it's important to note here if you're tuning in and you're in southern Arkansas, from the Eldoret Police. There are several low-lying streets that are currently underwater and are now closed. And with more rainfall expected, uh, this most likely won't be a, an isolated case. There, there could possibly be more like that. But like I said, we do have the tornado warning that is currently ongoing, so we probably won't touch on those uh, heavy rainfall totals in southern Arkansas for a bit, but it's worth noting, please don't try to get out there and drive to those uh, flooded roadways. That is just a recipe for disaster, especially if there's an ongoing thunderstorm. Well, and, and for a lot of these areas that have seen some very heavy rainfall, the last thing you want to do is to, to be having to try to outrun a tornado or a tornadic thunderstorm and then you come across a roadway that's covered with water or closed because it's covered with water and then you've got a completely different set of problems on your hands. Um, still watching the Posey Webb Camp Road area. I know we're in kind of a, a very rural section, um, low population and, and, and things of that nature. But again, for folks that are in these areas, uh, I would I would be very surprised to not see a new tornado warning coming soon uh, for portions of Catahoula Parish. In fact, there's the new tornado warning now. Uh, it is coming out for Catahoula and Franklin Parishes. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado uh, located over Aimwell, 11 miles west of Harrisonburg, moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. So there's your new tornado warning until 1145. Uh, I'm going to zoom in. There is the Aimwell community and there's our purple circle that has been uh, kind of outlining where we think the tornado would be and uh, kind of following the structure of, of this storm. I'm going to keep refreshing that as it now starts to cross the parish line. 
with this new tornado warning that goes until 1145. Uh, so again, for folks in Aimwell and the upstream communities, also something that we don't talk about a lot on social media. And if you're watching us on Facebook Live, please keep in mind that Facebook live streams in any capacity, even if you are watching live, are delayed. So if you're watching this live, you may be getting information that's 30, 60, 90 seconds old. So you need to think 30 to 90 to 60 seconds in the future. And so you for folks upstream that are watching this in some of those neighboring communities that are under the tornado warning and you're thinking, OK, I have time. Look at the timestamp on the top left hand side of your screen. It's 1041. I wouldn't wait. Go ahead and get into your safe place now, because again, if you're watching this in any sort of delay, even live television has a delay of some sort. And then when you watch on social media, you're going to have an even longer delay after that. So think ahead. Don't don't think right now in this area. If you're in the path of this storm, you want to start thinking in advance. Start taking cover now. Uh, because again, you may be getting information that's actually a minute and a half, two minutes late just because of the lags of technology. So just please keep that in mind as we follow this purple circled area moving to the north and east. Gilbert, Wisner, folks along Highway 425 are under this tornado warning. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, so the community of Aimwell, Spring Ridge, Sherwood, you need to be in your safe place right now because the air rotation that we're looking at is starting to move over that general area. So you need to take shelter now. If you don't live in those areas, you live near the duty enterprise. This is going out further in the Polygon uh, extension, the community of Wisner, Wisner uh, yep. Gilbert, and Chase, and Waller Landing, Jigger. If you live in any of the communities I just mentioned, the tornado is coming your way and you need to be seeking, go ahead and start heading to your tornado safe place. This particular tornado warning is not set to expire till at least 1145. So for the next 45 to 50 minutes, this warning will be active until the weather service decides to cancel that if there's any sign of weakening with this storm. So so we, again, kind of broaden and span out a little bit to kind of hit the reset button, so to speak, on what's what's going on uh, in uh, Catahoula and Franklin parishes. And again, think upstream, think advance notice. So for folks along Highway 425, Winsboro, you're technically not in this tornado warning. Technically, you're under the severe thunderstorm warning, but you're not under the tornado warning. Gilbert, Wisner, and folks along 425, you are under the tornado warning. And again, 425 this time of the day is a pretty highly traveled area as folks try, drive from Monroe to Baton Rouge. That 425 stretch, a lot of folks exit in Rayville and head south down 425 and then eventually move toward Clarity, uh, Clayton, Faraday, and Vidalia. Uh, just keep in mind that along 425, there's been some heavy rainfall and then the possible tornado will be headed there probably in the next 30 to 45 minutes, if not sooner. So go ahead, guys. The Weather Service has put out a bulletin that there is a weak but tight couplet right along the parish line between Catahoula and LaSalle Parish right now where they extended that warning. So right there along that line right there, there is a tight couplet and you can kind of see it right now. I'll draw a little circle around it. It's just a little particular area right here that they said there's a little couplet that's producing some rotation. Again, this is radar confirmed. There's not a spotter that said it's there. It's not radar confirmed. It, it's, it's radar indicated. Radar right. indicated. And yeah. so again, a spotter's not confirmed that it's there, but we are indicating the possibility of rotation right there. So that's the reason why they've extended this tornado warning into a Catahoula and extending it a little bit towards Franklin Parish as well. As Chase mentioned, uh, what, what we're seeing there, what a couplet is, is what the weather service is indicating. Those outbound and inbound winds is showing winds going multiple directions in and out. And as they start tightening up, you start seeing them kind of stack up red away from the radar site, green towards. And that just tells us that we have rotation uh, tightening with this particular what we call couplet. They're just a pairing, if you will, of multiple reds and greens kind of coming together. And as it kind of muddles into a gray, that's when we start monitoring it more for circulation increase. Okay. A storm tracker. I put a tracker on this. It will be in the Wisner community at 11 o'clock, Gilbert at 11.01, and Winsboro. It will be near your area at around 11.04. Again, you're not included in the tornado warning. However, it will be near your area. This is going along the extension of that polygon. It's just now crossing into northern Catahoula Parish right now, and our next three largest communities are the Winsboro, yep. Gilbert, and Wisner. Gilbert and Wisner. Wisner, in yep. Gisner or Gilbert and Wisner are included in the tornado warning, but Winsboro is not. 
All right, so again, uh, the, the circled area that we have on the screen, actually a pretty uh, strong signature considering where it's been and how weak it's looked at times. And, and you know, the National Weather Service is confirming basically what we've been seeing on live storm tracker Doppler radar. I'll be honest, we have the best vantage point out of any radar uh, in this area. Fort Polk is probably the closest radar that can see anything from the National Weather Service. So we're getting this uh, view probably at about four or 5,000 feet and have uh, the best indicator indication of this signature on radar as it trails off to the north and east. So that's why we're going to stick with this. The tornado warning goes until 1145. But as we've mentioned, Wisner uh, and, and uh, a lot of the surrounding communities along Highway 425 Gilbert uh, and even in Winsboro, you, you guys need to keep an eye on this storm. Uh, you, you are officially not under the tornado warning by technicality, but you are under the severe thunderstorm warning. The Harrisonburg community not under the tornado warning, not under the severe thunderstorm warning. The storm's likely going to pass you folks to the north. And will continue to move through relatively rural sections of northern Catahoula Parish until it moves into southern Franklin. And really the, the bigger road that would be impacted would be high, Highway 425. And as I mentioned, that is a very highly traveled road this time of the day, especially as we start to approach lunchtime. So again, keep that in mind as we go through uh, the daytime hours, uh, or at least here in the next uh, two or three hours as this storm continues to trail off to the north and east. I know I keep repeating ourselves. I know we keep repeating ourselves over and over and over, but for folks that are just getting to a TV, just getting to Facebook Live, whatever, please be mindful that a tornado warning is in effect for Catahoula Parish. Uh, Chase, you got something? Yeah, so the bulletin just came out. It just crossed uh, State Road 126 and is now coming up on Spring Ridge Road right now. The tornado warning, the one moving into Catahoula Parish right now, it's coming up on Spring Ridge Road that was bulletin just put out. And I'm spring, uh, zooming in right there. And there is the community of Spring Ridge right there. Sherwood and was the old Columbia Road. If you live in any of these areas I just mentioned, Rosefield, Enterprise, Duty, you need to start heading to your tornado safe place right now. That is where you need to be. An interior closet, an interior bathroom, a tornado shelter or underground shelter are the best place you can be. But if you don't have that, like I said, an interior closet or bathroom, mobile homes are not safe places to be at all during any type of severe weather event. Yep, and and we keep following the same. We we've, we've been talking about Spring Ridge and Sherwood for about the last 15, 20 minutes. So um, for folks in that area, <clears throat> this shouldn't be a surprise that you're under this tornado warning. It shouldn't be a surprise that we're telling you to take cover right now, and um, it shouldn't be surpri uh, surprising that you're getting kind of slammed with some heavy rain and things of that nature. Uh, the circled area, the, the purple circle, is the, the one thing that we've been kind of telling folks to follow as we continue to outline these very um, limited signatures on radar. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, as we zoom into this and you see this red, the reds and greens combined together on screen, uh, one scan it will look very, very, very distinct and kind of strong. Uh, and then the next scan, it will look very, very measly and puny. And that's where we're going to run into issues with these types of and, and I said this about 30 minutes ago, almost tropical-like environment is that these circulations will pulse up and pulse down. So it could produce a tornado, may not produce a tornado, then possibly produce one. So it's just so inconsistent that we just want folks sheltered. Uh, there's a lot of heavy rainfall right now. Uh, you don't need to be trying to bother with uh, getting out on the roads. Avoid travel. Uh, highway 425, uh, Highway 165 moving out of Columbia, headed south out of Monroe. If you're headed toward Ala, Urania, and some of those uh, areas in northern uh, LaSalle Parish, uh, if you're headed that way, the rain's cleared out in some spots, but trying to get there would be kind of a pain at this point because considering all the heavy rain that is uh, continuing uh, off uh, to your north. Uh, Gilbert, Wisner, uh, and folks upstream from this tornado or possibly possible tornado. Again, we just want folks to be aware and alerted uh, and keep in mind that if you're watching this on social media, you're probably watching it with some sort. You are watching it with a delay. It's just a matter of how long of a delay. So don't think right now. Think 30, uh, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, two minutes in the future, maybe even three minutes in the future and get yourself into those safe places. Highway 425, Wisner, Gilbert, points uh, in far northern reaches of uh, Catahoula Parish still tracking this possible tornado as it trails off to the north and east. And as you say that, Jared, I wanted to echo what something you said moments ago and just uh, hit me that uh, not only are the feeds delayed, uh, no matter what you're watching on, whether that be streaming or through television, but also you have to think 
our radar is pretty quick here, but also radar still has to take a scan of the atmosphere and come back and, mm -hmm. and differentiate what's going on. So you could have the quickest and most efficient radar around, but that still has to read the atmosphere. So that just adds another bit of a delay, though it may be small, on top of streaming and television delays. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, this is a live scan um, that you're getting from the live storm tracker Doppler radar, but you only get a refresh scan in any one area every 60 seconds. So as soon as that radar passes through this area, you, 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 the clock starts ticking in your mind, and you start thinking, okay, 10, 15, 20, and, it, and you've passed so many seconds where you haven't had that refreshed image. There's our possible tornado there very weak echo region that you see uh, again not as is organized as we were seeing earlier but also our radar starting to pick up some heavier rainfall uh, here at the West Monroe studios trailing to the north and east that tornado warning still in effect until 1145 we still had another hour on this tornado warning or give or take uh, as it moves off to the north and east so we've got new reports of some minor flooding occurring in Union Parish and this was submitted by the Union Parish Sheriff Burt Green and he was uh, sent this into the. He Washington works. Coast. He works for the sheriff's department. But uh, yeah, 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 go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sheriff's office. Burt Green reported this in that there's minor flo minor flooding occurring around Farmerville. Now they have issued a new fl uh, flash flood warning for Union County, and this does include El Dorado, as they have already picked up two to three inches of rainfall just within the past. A few minutes alone so there's a lot of rainfall occurring across much of the region and just to add so they just added this a new severe thunderstorm warning has been issued all right so we'll look for um, we'll continue to keep an eye on the tornado warning uh, until 11:45, but also the very heavy rainfall uh, as we go through the next uh, a little bit go ahead Trey uh, that severe thunderstorm warning that you see to the left of the red tornado warning on your screen has been issued as a severe thunderstorm warning, but the National Weather Service in Shreveport has issued it with a tornado possible tag. So that storm is uh, definitely concerning, and you'll notice on the, on the left side of the yellow box there, uh, they're going to monitor that storm and to continue to do so as it has the potential to produce a tornado, not necessarily meeting the criteria in the Weather Service eyes, uh, of deserving a tornado warning at the moment, but as it follows that red box right there, the tornado warning kind of going to train over a similar area, but it's definitely no concerning as well. Don't let your guard down just because it's a severe thunderstorm warning. All right, thanks guys. Uh, again, continue to track uh, multiple severe thunderstorms and, and things of that nature. Here's a look at the uh, tornado warning in effect till 1145. The purple area that we were talking about earlier continues to trail off to the north and east, so be mindful of that. Uh, as it continues to uh, uh, be the possible tornado that we're tracking. The other storm that we were talking about or that Trey was just mentioning is this severe thunderstorm warning that includes parts of Wynn, Grant, LaSalle, and uh, Caldwell parishes until 1145. A tornado can't be ruled out in that storm. Uh, again, a tornado warning hasn't been issued, but a tornado could form given the environmental conditions in those areas. So again, just keep that in mind. But again, our primary fo focus here in the short term is uh, the tornado warned storm. Again, there's a lot of heavy rainfall, so you're going you're, you're to hear a lot of talk about uh, flash flood warnings and things of that nature and potential flash flooding. We're just not going to be able to spend a whole lot of time on flash. We, we don't you know, traditionally cut in for tornado uh, for uh, flash flood warnings and things of that nature. Uh, you just need to be in your safe place and and, uh, and and be sheltered. Stay off the roads if flash flooding is becoming an issue in your area as well. Go ahead, guys. Y'all have anything new? Uh, yes, the National Weather Service in Shreveport has now issued a, uh, well, they're just uh, kind of noting this. They don't have a tag on it for severe thunderstorms. Won't spend much time on it, but uh, strong thunderstorms are impacting uh, pretty much the, the majority of our southern Arkansas yeah. parishes. Yeah, it's not a big surprise. Uh, the significant weather advisory that's just been issued, um, kind of like a mini severe thunderstorm warning or a minor severe thunderstorm warning, if you will. It's just basically letting you know um, that active weather is happening in that particular uh, area. Going to go back to the tornado warn storm as it uh, approaches 425. That uh, that signature that we were talking about, not quite as um, as distinct and and again we've talked about this a lot over the last couple of days um, or in, in the last day and a half is that any 
possible tornado that we would run into would likely be rather brief and short lived in the grand scheme of things. But in, in the other thing to keep in mind with any of these storms as they continue to, to, to develop is that they, they will cycle, they will strengthen and then they'll weaken. And, and that's uh, something that's very common, um, you know, for these types of storms as they continue to trail uh, to the north and east in a tropical like environment. That's what the, the word that I keep saying. There's a lot of high dew points. It's warm, it's humid, it's, uh, uh, it's unstable, but it's, we're working with such low, low amounts of instability that most of our environment is really thriving today off of just the high amounts of shallow tropical moisture and just maximized wind shear in the environment. So uh, that, that's, that's where we're seeing these storms as, the, as they continue and as we approach the lunchtime time frame uh, for folks in Franklin Parish, just make sure that you're staying sheltered. Uh, again, that, that tornado signature is not as strong and distinct as it was about 20 minutes ago or even five minutes ago, but could ramp back up really at any point. Uh, so just keep that in mind as, as we go through the next um, uh, 20 to 30 minutes. This warning again remains in effect till um, 1145. So we've got another 45 minutes ish uh, with this particular storm uh, as a tornado warning. We're looking at the storm relative velocity right now. This is actually using Fort Polk's radar. It's giving a little bit better indication there of some rotation occurring in the same area we were talking about earlier. It's just now passing Sherwood and now right over the community of Duty and Enterprise moving to the, the northeast towards Gilbert and Wisner. And again, if you live within the areas I just mentioned, this is where we're seeing the area of rotation, the strongest area right now. And we're trying to see if we can't pull up the correlation coefficient. But again, this has just been radar indicated. There's not been a, a tornado confirmed yet but we again need to take precautionary measures right now. If you live in the areas that I mentioned, you need to be heading to your tornado safe place right now. And this is really the only active tornado warning that we have right now within the viewing area. However, we do have multiple severe thunderstorm warnings that have been issued by the weather service across our viewing area to the south. All right, so again, that severe thunderstorm warning till 1145 for uh, portions of Wind Parish. Uh, the tornado warning in also in effect till 1145 for portions of Catahoula and Franklin parishes. Uh, also to recap, a tornado watch uh, is is in effect for a good chunk of the area until 5 p.m. To this evening. And, and again, it's simply because of the the makeup in the environment that allows for these these cells to produce possible tornadoes. Um, periods of heavy rainfall will also continue to become an increasing concern. Uh, we've had an aerial flood watch issued since yesterday, um, and, and so it's, it's not a surprise that we're seeing the heavy rainfall. I will say that the, the severe weather, the, the, the tornado threat, uh, while isolated, was also not a huge shock today, but uh, to be dealing with the quantity of tornado warnings, to have so many storms that are showing tornadic characteristics and they're showing those tornadic characteristics for such an extended period of time. Um, yeah, that, that that is a little bit of a surprise today. So again, tracking our possible tornado. I'm not going to circle it because every 60 seconds we get a new swipe. So I'm just going to continue to point it out to you. Columbia is on the far left hand side of the screen. Again, you're on uh, under the severe thunderstorm warning. Winsboro under a severe thunderstorm warning, but not under a tornado warning. Main uh, communities that are under the tornado warning currently uh, Wisner, Gilbert, and then as you stretch back to the south and west toward the duty and enterprise areas, um, uh, you folks are um, our are, are main concerns in terms of populated areas, if you will, within this tornado warning. Uh, the new swipe will give us a new update and a kind of a refreshed image, if you will. Uh, and yeah, there's still that, that the reds and greens combining together. Now, when we, we're looking at this, we're looking at velocities mode right now. You have the reds are winds that are being surveyed that are in some form or fashion moving away from the radar. The green are winds that are in some form or fashion moving toward the radar. So when you have winds moving away and winds moving toward, and they tend to, tw they're, they're, that would indicate or imply that there is some twist or some spin in the environment. Now, tornadoes happen at ground level. So you're, you're looking at this right now, and we're probably seeing this at about 4,000, 5,000 feet. So we're thinking about what's happening 
up here in the atmosphere and we need to know what's happening at ground level. Well, we don't know what's happening at ground level. So that's why the tornado warning is issued uh, and under the implication that a tornado could form in this cell or that it already has. Uh, there could have been a tornado on the ground for um, uh, several minutes and, and maybe upwards closer to an hour. Now, again, this is not what I would consider a favorable environment for a long track supercell that would keep a tornado on the ground for uh, two or three hours like we've seen earlier in the tornado season. Uh, but it is at least capable of producing those EF1 brief tornadoes and in, in EF1, EF0, EF2, you're still talking about anywhere from winds to 70, 110 miles an hour, and that's still plenty that can cause all kinds of problems. All it takes is one storm in your area. We talk about that a lot. So if you're in uh, the, uh, the duty and enterprise areas, you want to be sheltered, you want to be in your safe place, uh, you're starting to talk about the Jones Landing communities, uh, uh, Jones Landing Road, and some of those uh, uh, surrounding areas. If those roads sound familiar, you need to be in your safe place. You need to be in your interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Um, Chase, uh, this signature does look significantly weaker in the last scan, but um, still moving off to the north and east. Uh, like I said, Jones Landing, uh, Tom Kerrigan Road, Johnson Road, Moore Road, a lot of these areas, again, in northern sections of Catahoula Parish moving into Franklin Parish. Yeah, the, the rotation right now near duty and enterprise, there is signs of it weakening. I've been switching between our Doppler radar and all along with Fort Polk, and both radars are in agreement that the rotation is not as strong as it was. Again, this area has already been dealing with tornado warning. We had it earlier, and now here we are again with the same particular storm system that followed back behind the first mm -hmm. one, and now the same areas are kind of under that tornado warning once again. Now, like I said, it's been starting to weaken, but that doesn't mean that we're good, we're all clear. No, that means that the storm is weakening. However, we still need to keep the warning active until we know for a fact that the rate rotation is no longer there, which the Weather Service is still monitoring that and will keep it up for at least the next 45 minutes until it expires. Yeah, or unless it's canceled early, um, which that does happen from time to time. Um, we had a couple of tornado warnings that were issued yesterday uh, that were issued uh, for 30, 45 minutes in length and then were actually able to be uh, canceled early, uh, thankfully because of um, uh, what we were dealing with in terms of the environmental conditions it just gave us a chance to uh, uh, to see those storms fizzle so again i've kind of circled our possible tornado it doesn't look like much and, and if and if you are uh, kind of a, uh, a weather enthusiast and you know what what you would look for in a tornado uh, and, and we see a lot of tornado signatures in our area so a lot of folks if you watch our coverage on a regular basis you know what you're looking at when you try to find those reds and greens together or at least the general idea in your mind and you usually also know what to coincide with the reflectivity you know what it would look like on radar this does not look like a tornado on radar but again if you're under a warning you need to be sheltered so Gilbert and Wisner stay in your safe places uh, you're you're under a severe thunderstorm warning either way. Um, so again, you want to be sheltered off the roads indoors uh, regardless. Uh, but that, that circled area, maybe even a little bit farther northward of our circled area right here, trailing to the north and east, will be exiting uh, Catahoula Parish here soon. Here's the Catahoula Parish line. This is Southern Franklin Parish. Gilbert, Wisner, Highway 425, Sicily Island here. Winsboro's way up here on the top part of your screen. Grayson, Clarks, Columbia, all back on the back left-hand side of your screen. So again, uh, we're going to be exiting Catahoula Parish here shortly, moving into Franklin Parish. So folks in Gilbert and Wisner need to keep an eye on this storm here in the short term. Yeah, there's a talk in the Weather Service chat. They're not very specific, but I believe they're referring to the uh, storm cycling. They're saying it's very weak, but they're noticing uh, possibly they say it may be cycling over again. But two things to note relating to that, uh, the first being that, uh, like Chase mentioned, don't let your guard down just because the circulation may be a little bit weaker. Uh, we saw earlier how uh, the circulation that kept us on air for over an hour actually was expired for just a couple minutes, and then it came right back and cycled back. But uh, the second thing to note is that something that will help us as we move further into the late morning, early afternoon, these particular cells that have been causing us trouble this morning will move more to the north and the east and as they do so the environment up in that area is going to be a little less conducive to uh, tornadic development as it's well. It's been pretty worked over from all the rain that we've seen and and when we talk about stuff like that and you see the the tornado warning has been updated 
Um, they, they've trimmed away a, a good chunk of north central and northwestern Catahoula Parish at this point. Uh, and, and this is also common. National Weather Service uh, issues a tornado warning and then they will usually update that tornado warning. Sometimes they issue, issue an update two or three times. Uh, but the, the update trims away people that are no longer in that tornado warning. So remember, it stretched back to the south and west over toward Gina and some of those surrounding areas. That part of the tornado warning has been lopped off. And so now, as the storm starts to cycle again and still has those reds and greens together, trailing off to the north and east, here is the... Um, uh, the, the, the parish line uh, across uh, portions of Catahoula and Franklin parishes. So again, we'll be crossing into Southern Franklin Parish here shortly and into Gilbert, Wisner, Highway 425 as the more impacted areas in some of these spots. And, and, and that's the other thing when we talk about atmosphere being worked over or overturned. We've seen a lot of rain and thunderstorms to our north. And while a lot of what we've been dealing with hasn't really been feeding off of instability in the atmosphere, you at least need some sort of instability to work with. And we're going to have much less to work with farther to the north. Now, wind shear values are still favorable. Low level rotation still there with some storms. That's why we're still dealing with the tornado warning that we're dealing with at the 11 o'clock hour this morning, um, but not expected to be a widespread threat. And I know I, I've kept saying that and we continue to get tornado warning after tornado warning, uh, but the, the even the tornado watch itself, uh, the, the thought process is that any tornadic activity should be sporadic and kind of erratic. And, and also that's why the National Weather Service keeps issuing tornado warnings for storms that look kind of puny on radar. It won't take much to get things spinning on a day like today uh, with the environment that's in place. Uh, so again, uh, the severe thunderstorm warning continues till 1145 uh, for portions of Catahoula, Franklin and Tensaw parishes. The tornado warning also till 1145, basically right over Enterprise at this point and continuing to trail to the north and east. So the purple circled area that we've uh, continued to talk about all morning, that's where our possible tornado would reside. And as we get the new um, radar image refresh, and it's still pretty much that same spot. Um, Just something to add, you know, with the severe thunderstorm warning and the tornado warning, there is a lot of heavy rainfall starting to move into western sections of Washita Parish coming out of Lincoln and Jackson Parish right now. And honestly, we could possibly see the potential for some flash flooding here within the, the local areas here in Washita Parish coming out of Ruston right now. I mean, it's just a strong line right there coming out into our area. So definitely something to be watching and alert to. Yeah. So everyone, you know, this is lunchtime. I mean, if you're not right. at lunch or at work, kids are currently at school right now. So this is just something that's happening just during the daytime hours and the tornado watch. It's going to continue till 5 p.m. and we're, we're going to be here for as long as that watch is active and you know stay on air for the duration of the current tornado warning. We only have one going on right now, and that was the one coming out of Catahoula Parish and coming into Franklin Parish right here. Yeah, it should be. Uh, should be crossing the river here soon. Go ahead, Trey. Uh, and that's important to note, or just interesting to note, like Chase said, uh, the storms will be continuing for quite some time. Now, the severe weather potential and tornadic threat remains to be seen how it's going to play out uh, through the rest of the morning, early afternoon. But I say that uh, to say that if you notice that tornado warning uh, encompassing parts of uh, Catahoula and Franklin parishes, uh, right underneath that is the severe thunderstorm warning. It has a tornado possible tag, but I believe they placed that there. So if the tornado warning is able to fall back. You're still dealing with heavy winds, torrential rainfall, potentially damaging winds, and, and maybe a hail potential as well. All right, so again, tornado warning in effect, severe thunderstorm warning back to the west, and also that cluster of storms along I-20 that, that, that Chase was alluding to earlier. Yeah, this is a very, very hard are, line drawn out right here that I was kind of like Those are some mean to. looking storms that are going to be moving into Washita Parish here shortly. May not necessarily be severe um, by definition. Again, severe by definition, 58 mile an hour winds or greater, uh, quarter sized hail or larger, uh, but they, they look pretty menacing. And I'm going to zoom out so you can see the, uh, the, the purple circled area uh, that uh, is our possible tornado. 
and uh, there's the tornado warning information. But uh, also, uh, you could see what we're alluding to across uh, north central Louisiana, where we may see some uh, damaging wind gusts, it may warrant a new severe thunderstorm warning in some of these areas uh, as uh, we move toward Calhoun, Shudrant, uh, the Douglas community, Downsville, some of these areas moving eastward. Uh, we'll eventually be moving into Monroe, West Monroe, and then that also creates the headache of heavy rains fixing to go over to the, the radar site, and that could also uh, limit our radar strength. Here's our tornado warn storm continuing to trail to the north and east, uh, now crossing the Washita River into uh, portions of Franklin Parish. Uh, again, that warning goes till 1145, but we're about to get some booming thunderstorms here in uh, Washita Parish as well. Um, I'll be honest with you as 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 we continue our our on air coverage. This is probably one of the one of the um, roughest busted severe weather forecasts we've seen in a while in terms of um, uh, having such uh, significant tornado potential and I say significant in that it's been long in duration. It's not necessarily significant in uh, I don't think we're going to see a violent tornado today. I don't think we're going to see an EF4 or an EF5 or you know something of that magnitude, but just how many uh, spinning storms we've had over the last 12 hours or so is pretty striking and now to also see these damaging wind potential, the heavy rain possibilities. Uh, again, I'll be honest with you. I didn't really see a lot of this coming today. Yeah, we've been under a marginal threat yesterday, uh, last night and then also for today. And I was talking about earlier during the morning show, you know, the tornadic threat really wasn't that high for today, mm -hmm. but there's just been enough instability and shear in the atmosphere as we progress through the morning hours today that there have been some light spin ups. But like uh, Jared was mentioning, we're not really anticipating any type of tornado that forms today to be considered violent, like EF4 or EF3, anything that forms, we're really anticipating more of like that zero and one. If we do, the strongest one may possibly be a two. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the atmosphere is just not strong enough to have those strong, violent tornadoes like that. But you know, a tornado, even an EF0 tornado is still can produce the damaging winds and can damage a mobile home. It can still do rooftop damage to maybe right. a house or a business. You send a tree down, you send a tree through a home, um, it doesn't matter if it was an EF0 or an EF5, it, 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 still, it can still cause issues. And, and we're saying all these things not to try to discount the warnings or to tell folks that they don't have to take cover or something like that. We're letting you know because of the, the sporadic nature and the kind of the quantity of what we've seen in terms of uh, tornado warnings is probably going to outweigh the quality of what we're seeing in terms of tornado warnings. Uh, what we've seen in terms of signatures, I know a lot of folks are going, why are they issuing a tornado warning? for that uh, and, and and the National Weather Service has been very very adamant about just reminding folks of the nature of this environment it's tropical like almost in nature but also it's very rare for this time of year uh, to see these types of setups and, and for it to be so complicated and complex and we've got so many different moving pieces in the forecast and that's why today has really kind of panned out the way it has uh, is it's it's not an it's not an easy forecast and and with these storms we kept watching these uh, these little supercellular tornadic type thunderstorms last night going okay that one will be the last one because surely the environment couldn't support any more and we got about a five hour gap from about uh, you know 10 p.m. last night till 3 or 4 a.m. this morning where we didn't see much and then sure enough by five, six, seven o'clock in the morning, we were already dealing with more storms that were spinning in the area and causing uh, these types of headaches. Uh, for folks along 425, this tornado warning will be approaching you shortly. We still have another 30 minutes, another half hour on this tornado warning. The other kicker with a lot of this activity, it is moving very, very slowly, yeah, and that's gonna create the heavy rain problems too. Yeah, this, these storm systems are only moving at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So these are definitely slow moving storm systems right now. And we'll, that's the reason why the flash flooding threat is so high because once these storms develop and the rain starts, it's just gonna kind of hover over the area because it's moving so slowly. And thus that's what led to the potential flood risk across the entire area. And that's the reason why we had the aerial flood watch that was issued for pretty much the entire viewing area for today and for this afternoon. Which I'm gonna be honest, that, that's the more widespread threat out of everything. Yeah, we do have the isolated tornado threat, but we all know that tornadoes impact very, 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 very small areas. Widespread flash flooding can impact much, much larger areas. And so hence, you know, that the 
that's that's going to be a concern for everybody today. Not everyone's going to see a tornado warning today. In fact, the vast majority of us won't see tornado warnings today. Yep. Um, but everyone's going to see that heavy rain risk as these storms continue to, to rumble through. There's our possible tornado as it's mentioned right now. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in Jones Landing and the Holly Grove metropolis communities. These are all areas as we approach Wisner on the far right hand side of your screen. Uh, the Elam and Peck areas. Those are communities south of Wisner along 425. You see Cargill Road, Metropolis Road, Tom Kerrigan Road, Johnson Road. Those are just a few that uh, I can uh, I can read off from uh, from my vantage point. But as you say, uh, take a look at the screen uh, to kind of reset our viewers on air and online. A tornado warning in effect till 11:45 this morning uh, for portions of Franklin Parish, also Catahoula Parish. Although this storm has now firmly or is firmly moving into Franklin Parish. There is the parish line, which is the Washita River that winds all the way back up to the north and west. Uh, Holly Grove, Metropolis, that's my mouse cursor, so you could kind of follow. Everything's going to be moving kind of where my mouse cursor is there, moving to the north and east toward cutoff uh, landing and Craig Landing in some of those areas east of 425. This signature is not as strong as it was 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, but uh, again, the low-level um, peculiar nature of the of the tornadic signatures that we've seen today. Don't want to sleep on them. Don't want to don't want to let your guard down. Uh, if you're under a tornado warning, you need to be sheltered. Yeah, Jared, uh, I think it's interesting to note as well that uh, where, where this storm is particularly located, uh, you hear us often talk about the advantages of, of seeing storms at a lower level with our radar and the uh, hole that it covers. And uh, with this particular positioning of that storm, these are the days, whether it's a large severe weather outbreak or in a situation like this, these are the times when the Doppler radar comes in handy here mm -hmm. at the West Monroe studio, because if you look at the position of it at the moment, it would be between three radar sites. Yeah, the Weather Service actually has commented that they're having a little trouble seeing this particular storm coming through Franklin Parish right now, but with our Doppler radar, we're actually to see a pretty decent still rotating signature right here if you're looking at it right now on your screen just to the west and southwest of Gilbert and Wisner right now if you live within Gilbert and Wisner you need to start heading to your safe place because this tornado warning is still active and it's not expected to expire until 11:45. so we still have a decent amount of time left while the storm is still active and still producing enough rotation to indicate the possibility of a tornado moving in your direction okay so let's reset for uh, for everybody um, and I'm going to zoom in and kind of take us back almost to home on our radar screen. You can see the tornado warning. Uh, you can also still see the, uh, the, the ticker at the bottom of the screen, um, which is also indicating, you know, uh, the information uh, in terms of the tornado warning. But I also want to span out as it's a, now 11.15 in the morning and we're approaching lunchtime and a lot of folks are going to be heading out and about and they're going to step outside and they're going to see some really scary looking clouds across the area. I'm talking about folks in Farmerville toward the state line into uh, uh, El Dorado. There's no severe thunderstorm warnings, nothing of that sort in effect in your area in terms of severe weather, but you folks have seen a lot of heavy rainfall. So exercise caution if you're venturing, venturing out at lunchtime. Along the I-20 corridor uh, in Calhoun, Downsville, Shudrant, some of these areas headed toward Monroe. Very menacing, scary looking clouds. Nothing severe, but some very heavy rainfall and maybe some 30 or 40 mile an hour wind gusts along the interstate in the next hour. Exercise caution. All severe weather right now is south of I-20 with the tornado warning that's still in effect moving into central or south central sections of Franklin Parish. Think Gilbert and Wisner and some of the surrounding areas until 1145. There's also a larger severe thunderstorm warning that surrounds that area also I believe until 1145. And then another severe thunderstorm warning moving through southwestern sections of uh, Caldwell Parish, northern sections of LaSalle Parish, a good chunk of Wind Parish and northern Grant Parish. That moves off to the east. I believe that goes until noon. Uh, maybe 1215. I'm not sure on that severe thunderstorm warning. Either way, uh, it's still in effect for a while. Uh, so again, that kind of recaps everything that we're dealing with. Some tor torrential heavy rainfall along I-20. I wouldn't be surprised to see a quick two or three inches of rain in some spots. Exercise caution everywhere as you venture out and about today. Speaking of flash flooding and flooding concerns, along with the torrential heavy rainfall, notice the band of rainfall that's moving uh, towards the Monroe area in Washita Parish. 
Notice that the thinner uh, end of that, still heavy but thinner side, has moved through Farmerville and that's already caused uh, flooding, though it's already fairly minor, but the flooding has already started in areas like Farmerville, which helps that it's got areas like uh, Lake Darbone so close, but nevertheless, you get the picture. It's not going to take long with these torrential rainfall totals to increase flooding potentials across the area. And you can totally expect some gusty winds, even with this line moving into Washtenaw Parish right now. It's not severe, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some gusts of probably 30, 40 miles per hour, because this is a pretty strong line moving just into the Washtenaw Parish right now. And coming out of Farmerville, you can just see where they're just now uh, exiting that heavy rainfall that's moving just out of that area. And there's been some minor flash flooding already occurring. And with much more rainfall to follow back behind it, looking back towards Streetport, there's still a lot more rainfall to go. So flash flooding and minor uh, creek and river flooding will definitely be a concern throughout the remainder of this morning and this afternoon. So if you encounter any flooded roadway, either there's standing water or water moving across the road, don't try to drive through it. It doesn't take but six inches of uh, standing water to push a vehicle off of the road and yep. that can be potentially life-threatening in a situation like that. Jared, so, I believe they just canceled the t tornado warning for portions of Catahoula Parish, well, yeah, but they extended yeah. it for Franklin Parish. Well, they, they when they updated the tornado warning, they trimmed Catahoula out because because the, the tornado is in Franklin Parish, so they, they're going to the, the, the tornado warning continues as scheduled till 1145 for Franklin Parish. Catahoula Parish, you're no longer under the tornado warning simply because the storm has moved out of your area. Um, yeah, I, I, I just really think that while the signature is, it's, it's just still there. It's just kind of meandering there. Um, I don't think it's enough to really cancel the tornado warning uh, because it, it, it's, yeah, it's still spinning and, yeah, and it's so it's not showing any indication at all that it's like weakening at all with our radar we're able to get a better scan with it right here and it it's there like you said and so gilbert wisner there's still potential rotation moving your direction and you need to start heading to your safe place now if this were to continue i don't expect winsboro is not what included in the tornado warning however you are included in the severe thunderstorm warning but it's still close enough that you need to be alert and if you're going to be traveling along 425 or know anyone that would be definitely need to be letting them know or be alert as you're traveling to that direction again it's lunchtime it's the middle of the day people are out and about and we just have this one air rotation that just no not showing any signs of waking at all it's not it's, yeah it's not overly strong it's just not going away it's it's persistent and uh kind of almost nagging at this point as it uh, kind of moves to the north and east. And I've, I've elongated this area out somewhat. Uh, we were kind of focused on just a smaller circled area and I've elongated it out just a little bit just to kind of indicate a, the, a tornado warning is issued for a broader area than just the one isolated area where the tornado is expected to form. I would expect that if there is a tornado forming right now, it would be in this area right here, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities for it to be displaced a little bit more uh, to the north and west. So as the radar sweeps through, you get a new uh, update. Again, doesn't look overly impressive, but every time we've had that happen, the next swipe comes through and you start seeing those brighter colors and the brighter greens. It's a tough day to try to indicate tornadic signatures on a day like today simply because it's not these clear cut signs, bright greens, bright reds. OK, there's a possible tornado here. We're not able to indicate any kind of lofted debris in the environment so you can confirm that a tornado is on the ground. It's not one of those days. It's um, almost more indicative of, of, a, of a land falling tropical system. And I keep talking about that. This is not a tropical system, but it almost is like that in nature in that the tornado warnings are uh, for very weak signatures um, and a lot of these are not necessarily fast moving but they can pulse up quickly so one scan they look you know uh, you know like they're producing a tornado then the next scan comes through and doesn't look like anything um, so the next scan comes through and this may look very vastly different at this point yeah see the colors get a little bit brighter at that point so you start wondering okay maybe it's still trying to spin maybe it's still trying to rotate and it's stretched out over a large area so as this approaches 425 if you know somebody that's driving south maybe to baton rouge as i mentioned earlier 425 is a pretty popular road this time of the day from folks driving them in road to Baton Rouge. Everybody exits at Ravel or uh, near Ravel uh, gets on 425 and heads south. If you know somebody that's in this area south of Winsboro headed toward Wisner or kind of sandwiched somewhere between Winsboro and Sicily Island, 
Tell them to make a call. There's a lot of gas stations, a lot of stores and stuff like that in Gilbert and Wisner. Find a place to pull over, let the storm pass through, then you can resume your travel. Uh, Jared, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, one, I was just wondering, uh, it, would you attribute a lot of this storm kind of lingering around and kind of maintaining that slight circulation to it being out kind of in its own, I would yep. say, environment and just nothing able out there to just kind of break it up? I think, so that, I think that's definitely what's happening. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of on the leading edge out by itself. And what what, what uh, Trey is, was, is mentioning, and we talk about this a lot with supercells, if you will, but you, you, you look at the, the radar image as, it's, as it sits right now, and if you get a supercell structure or anything that's supercell-like, like what we're dealing with with our tornado warning in Franklin Parish, they like to be left alone. They don't want to be disrupted by other rain or other storms. They like to thrive in their own environment, and that way they can feed off of the ingredients that they need to continue to drive any kind of tornadic potential or damaging wind potential or anything of that nature. Uh, so while when you when you get them out away from the environment if this thing was tucked back somewhere in this general area right here it would be so disrupted it, it the wind field is very very weak today in the, at the surface so there's not a lot of wind feeding these tornadic thunderstorms if this were somewhere farther to the north it would have already been completely kind of ripped apart if you will uh, but because it's out here by itself it just continues to kind of meander off to the north and east now the good news is uh, it'll approach the state line probably in the next two or three hours so uh, even even if it d continues to hang on, which we can't guarantee that it will or it won't, uh, eventually it's going to exit our area. But it's our problem for the next uh, couple of hours at least because, again, these storms are moving very, very slowly. So I keep kind of stepping off the screen so we can kind of reposition. There's a lot of moving pieces right now. We've got the severe thunderstorm warning. We've got the heavy rain possibilities to the north. And then, uh, as I mentioned, this possible tornado continues to kind of flex its muscles every now and then and, and is now headed toward Wisner. So uh, again, for folks in Wisner, you've been under a tornado warning for 20, 30 minutes at this point, if not longer. Uh, I believe the tornado warning was issued right around 11 o'clock. It goes till 1145. You guys have had a lot of advance notice. Uh, we, you know, Trey and, and Chase have been on air for pretty much almost continuously since uh, the morning show this morning. And, and so we've had a, a numerous tornado warnings and this particular storm or possible tornado that is moving toward Wisner has had a tornado warning with it for the last half hour. Yeah, it's definitely just something to just be alert about. Like you said, it's just been a, a while, this particular warning mm -hmm. for the past 45 uh, minutes. It was at 11 o'clock and then 11.45. So a 45 minute window right there just for the polygon that was drawn out alone and then we had the severe thunderstorm warning that followed suit and also is set to expire 1145 however if the area of rotation doesn't show any sign of weakness they could potentially extend that and i would also imagine they would probably extend the severe thunderstorm warning with that because again there's there's a little bit of purple starting to show up on the radar just to the mm -hmm. north of that particular cell which is indicating the possibility of really heavy rainfall and possibility of some light hail. Now the Weather Service has been saying the radar indicated hail around three quarters of an inch, so just shy of severe limits. One inch hail is considered severe, so if you're just shy of that three quarters, but it has been producing winds of about 60 miles per hour indicated by the radar. So that's one of the reasons why they've continued the severe thunderstorm warning and along with that tornado warning with the continued rotational signature. A day like this is a textbook reminder of that it's spring, still spring here in the Arklamas and days like this, we started the day, if you were watching us back in the morning show, whether you were or weren't, we were under a level one out of five marginal risk for severe weather and Chase and I both uh, were kind of hammering out the uh, potentials for damaging wind and some hail and flash flooding was much higher than the tornadic threat, which remained pretty low and still does across portions of the area. But with that small potential there in our positioning, not only in the south, but also just near the Gulf of Mexico and where this storm has found itself with that warm, moist air able to just continually flow into the storm, things like this can happen. So this is why we always say whether it's a level one or level five out of five severe risk, the potential exists for it to kind of, so, so to speak, blow up like that. Yep. We, and we also have a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning that's just been issued for um, Washita Parish. So for a lot of folks at lunchtime that are getting the phone car, getting the alerts on their phone, 
that uh, a severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued. That that's what's going on. Uh, so you're going about to get that alert. You see um, the what's on your screen right now is uh, the possible tornado headed toward Wisner along Highway 425. This is near the Metropolis area, the Metropolis community, Calhoun Road. This is in again Franklin Parish. So for folks in Calhoun, Louisiana, I don't want them panicking too much, but you are under a severe thunderstorm warning. Charlie Stevens Road, Metropolis Road, Tom Kerrigan Road, the Elam Peck Wisner communities all need to be sheltered right now. Peck, you're technically outside of the tornado warning, but I'd be sheltered just in case. So again, that's the possible tornado headed toward Wisner. Um, heavy rainfall possibility there. So let's take a look at the new severe thunderstorm warning, and I'm going to keep the tornado warning on screen, but we're about to lose um, radar. Well, we're not going to lose it, but we are about to have some issues with our radar because uh, here comes the rain here at the West Monroe studios and and um, radars are not miracle workers. They will have to deal with some um, uh, attenuation problems, basically just very heavy rainfall that kind of shrinks the radar power down. So we're probably about to have to switch back over to Fort Polk to see the storm in or maybe even Jackson to see the storm in Franklin Parish because our radar is fixing to really struggle for at least the next five or 10 minutes because of the heavy rain associated with this severe thunderstorm warning. So the severe thunderstorm warning that's just been issued goes until uh, noon. Uh, it also has that tornado possible tag that we talk about. Basically, that tornado tag if you will, or po tornado possible tag is the National Weather Service's way of saying a tornado is not forming right now, but it could form within this severe thunderstorm warning. So just kind of alerting folks uh, to the possibilities. But uh, the, the warning itself is not for hail. The warning is issued for 60 mile an hour wind gusts. So uh, if you are in Washita, Caldwell and Union Parish is in this warning, you want to be sheltered and away from windows indoors. And, you know, we were mentioning this prior as it was entering Washington Parish. Remember, we were looking at how that hard line right there where it didn't really look that good on the radar. And as it moved closer, now they've issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Washington Parish. So we were kind of watching that as it was moving in, and we made some mentionings of it as it was moving in. may want to pull up um, uh, the, the tower cam on top of Glenwood or something like that and see what we can see from our vantage point. Uh, we may and we may want to switch over. That. So this is what I was talking about with our radar. And as soon as that first swipe, when the heavy rain set in, everything on our radar screen started to kind of shrink down in power. Those purples have gone to reds. The reds have gone to oranges. The oranges have gone to yellows. And the reason being is because we've run into just such torrential heavy rainfall here at the West Monroe Studios that you can't really see uh, much. So you may have to pull it up from your show. Um, but uh, either way, um, that's that's what we're dealing with currently uh, across our area. So I'm going to switch radar modes for just a second uh, and switch to a different uh, radar vantage point, if you will, uh, to keep track. Yeah, Justin, if you want to take uh, links one briefly, there you go. Thank you, sir. Um, you can see what's happening uh, at uh, Top Glenwood uh, Medical Center. Uh, you can see the heavy rainfall here at the West Monroe Studios, again, right around lunchtime. So, uh, again, just be mindful of what's happening um, in Washtenaw Parish. No tornado warnings, but a severe thunderstorm warning is in effect. Uh, all right, let's go back to the tornado warning in Franklin Parish. Uh, again, a storm that's headed toward the Wisner community. Uh, if it hasn't already started to impact the Wisner community, it will be uh, here shortly. Um, and again, looking at the National Weather Service radar in Jackson, still following that area right there along Highway 425. Again, cannot quite see as distinct and, and, and as discerned on our radar screen, but certainly still a circulation there. Goes till 1145, so we've got another 12 minutes or so. Um, get a lot of shaking traffic cams just looking off screen at um, uh, some of our traffic cameras and things of that nature out at Stella Mill, 5th Street uh, through Washita Parish. And again, there's uh, quite a lit, uh, quite a bit going on uh, right now um, in those areas. Still have that circulation in and around Wis uh, Wisner along Highway 425. Uh, so um, again, please be sheltered if you're in that area. Um, a new tornado warning may need to be needed in some spots. So just kind of keep that in mind um, as we go through the rest of the morning. That purple circled area that you see on your screen is um, our, our biggest area of concern 
And another thing to add, you know, with the heavy rainfall, just taking a look at the traffic cam, notice how the visibility just completely drops to almost near zero right there. That's how heavy this rainfall is. So if you're out traveling right now, I mean, it's honestly a good idea just to pull over just for a brief moment. Because, I mean, looking at the traffic cam right now, the visibility, it's just almost gone. I mean, you can all hardly see anything in the distance, and that's just how the visibility has dropped with this heavy rain that's been across the interstate. And yeah, that, that image is, is frozen now, so let's go back again to the tornado worn storm. Uh, as much as there's heavy rain and all that stuff happening in, in Washtenaw Parish, it's a severe thunderstorm warning. Be sheltered, stay off the roads. You're doing exactly what you need to do. we got to focus on this tornado warning as it continues to trail off to the north and east. Uh, again, that center, that, that circulation looks like it's still there in some form or fashion. My purple circle has uh, become a little bit outdated as uh, this storm starts to move toward Oakley Landing, Cutoff Landing, the Walter Landing or Waller Landing, excuse me, uh, communities, Griffin community. This is all now because here's 425. This red line right here is Highway 425. So this possible tornado has started to crawl east of Highway 425 will be headed toward Bayou Mason. Some of these areas, uh, Griffin Clubhouse Road area, far right hand side of your screen. Uh, this tornado warning is still in effect. And so while we have the severe thunderstorm warnings and a lot of stuff happening in, in higher populated areas, just stay off the roads in Monroe and West Monroe. Try to delay your lunch hour if you can. Uh, go later because, uh, again, I, I wouldn't want to try to get out and all this stuff. But in the short term, our focus is still over Franklin Parish and uh, eventually perhaps even into portions of Tensaw Parish if this storm were to hang on long enough. Again, I'm just going to kind of recycle and recircle our, our, our area of concern. Now, east of Wisner, if anybody is in Wisner and, and, and has had damage or anything of that sort, um, um, Jared, uh, please let us know damage, about it. We do have, a, just, just came in as you were saying that, uh, we do have damage reports in Winfield. When, uh, trees reported down across the roadway in Winfield. So. Okay, uh, and that's probably for one of those earlier thunderstorms or, or maybe from the severe thunderstorm warning that we have currently uh, in Wind Parish. So again, that's that's the other takeaway from, from today is that the, not only do we have the, the tornado warned storm, but we also have uh, numerous severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, one till 1145 for portions of Tensaw and Franklin Parish. Another one for Franklin and Richland Parish is until 1245. The one in Washita and Caldwell Parish is until noon. Uh, LaSalle Grant Caldwell and Wynn parishes until 1145. So a lot of different moving pieces, if you will, um, going on currently, but uh, the only tornado warning, Franklin Parish, Southern Franklin Parish until 1145. May need a new warning here soon, depending on how the circulation continues to act as it uh, moves toward uh, portions of Tensaw Parish uh, here in the next uh, half hour or so. Yeah, absolutely, Jared. And another uh, point of concern, not as concerning as the current tornado warning, of course, but uh, we're National Weather Service also kind of zeroing in on uh, what we call a Boeing feature out to our west, which would indicate we may transition more into a uh, straight line damaging wind threat uh, on if it holds to that general pattern, which we're starting to see develop on the western sides of the state. And even that segment right there, is kind of what we call the backward C there. Just when you see a normal linear set of storms, which is what you would call a line straight up and down, and then that, you push it from behind, the stronger winds kind of bow it out, and that's how you get that, what we call the bow echo, and we notice that when there's the uh, high likelihood of some strong winds behind those storms there. All right, so again, keep in mind as we talk about this possible tornado uh, and I was going to try to do a time of arrival, but I am way too zoomed in for that kind of thing right now. But uh, please keep in mind that uh, this tornado warning remains active. Uh, and, and I know while we've talked about the torrential rainfall and we've and, and we've talked about the wind potential and things of that nature on screen, we've left the tornado warning up because again, that is that is the number one concern or the number one priority as a new severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued. I'll, I'll read more information about that, but it, it's getting really messy on the radar screen right now between uh, the tornado warning, uh, us trying to pinpoint the tornado warning and all the different severe thunderstorm warnings that continue to pop up. Again, it, it, it becomes problematic trying to kind of 
figure it all out. New severe thunderstorm warning out for Catahoula and Franklin parishes until 1 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, 60 mile an hour wind gusts, the main concern there. Yeah, we definitely need to be careful and what, keeping an eye on the storm that's moving through, uh, coming out of Monroe right now. You can kind of start to see it starting to bow a little bit to the top there, and the severe thunderstorm warning was extended further to the east into Richland Paris, Parish, and we still have a lot more activity down to the south from Columbia stretching out of Winfield, moving back into the same areas that we're already doing with a few tornado warnings that we were talking about earlier this morning. And now, after they've already had that, now here comes another severe thunderstorm potentially moving through that could also bring wind damage of wind 60 miles per hour. So it's kind of like a double whammy when it comes to that because you have two systems that have already gone through. We're bringing so day. much rainfall on top of what we've already seen too. So that's gonna create its own headaches. Uh, as this tornado warning starts to kind of move away from its polygon. Bear with me for a second as I take down the severe thunderstorm warnings, at least on my screen. Um, there's just so much going on right now that I, I just kind of want to declutter the radar screen for just a little bit. And um, we'll keep an eye on the severe thunderstorm warnings and I'll pop them up from time to time. Uh, but uh, again, this is still a tornadic thunderstorm uh, moving east. And, and for folks along the Tensaw Parish line, I know that Tensaw Parish is one of our lowest populated parishes in the viewing area. Uh, when you get outside of Newelton and Waterproof, not a whole lot of folks that live there. But we're going to stick with this tornado warning anyway, uh, and because there are a lot of neighboring smaller communities there in northwestern Tensaw Parish that we want alerted. If you know somebody that lives there, maybe they're disconnected, maybe they're out to lunch, maybe they're you know running some errands or something for the day. Just make sure that they know um, that a tornado warning uh, is is off just to their west, and that a new warning may need to be issued shortly uh, for this storm. Yeah, there's still signs of rotation as this particular tornado is starting to exit its warrant area. It's getting around the outer edge of the polygon. If they were to extend that, it would kind of follow that same line where the severe thunderstorm warning is extended past Gilbert and Wisner right there. And then we're going to start stretching a little bit further into Tensaw Parish. So like you were saying, you know, if you live in Tensaw Parish, you know, this all these storms are coming your way. And even towards the Mississippi River Valley, getting closer towards Madison Parish and looking down to Concordia Parish as well. You know, you guys are not picking up on anything right now, but definitely need to be alert because later on, because we're about 20 minutes shy of the noon hour, and we're, as we head into the afternoon, we could still see potential for more strong storms as they're moving across or just kind of feeling over the energy that's currently over us. And if we see any new developments, that's where they're gonna really start occurring is out ahead, out of that main squall line, for anything potentially tornadic. And we're also starting to kind of crawl out of some of the heavier extreme rain rates here at the West Monroe Studios, um, which is going to give us a little bit of a break because now we can actually see this this uh, uh, Franklin Parish storm a little bit better as that circulation now kind of crawls east of Gilbert, east of Highway 425, now well east of Highway 425. Uh, but we'll, uh, here's the Tensaw line. Uh, Newelton's back behind me, waterproof back behind me as well. Um, but that's our possible tornado as it trails to the north and east. I will say that it does look to be a smidge weaker at this point. That doesn't imply that it is not forming a tornado. Again, just kind of disorganized, but also on that same note, uh, we're still dealing with rain here at the West Monroe Studios, so that probably is still kind of playing tricks on rain. Radar is not perfect science, um, but it does. It, it is a, a very valuable tool and vantage point. Um, uh, for us to work with. So uh, again, as you see that little appendage, that little area where a tornado could form, just please keep that in mind. Stay sheltered if you're in the path of the storm as it moves to the north and east. Yeah, Jared, uh, with that point uh, it brought to mind, you know, radar is a tool and it's an inc incredible tool and it's certainly improved tremendously over the past couple years and by themselves. The past couple years, radar has increased in its ability and its technology. But uh, also to note, to say that to say, that uh, radar is also, like you mentioned, not perfect, and it's not always a guarantee, and that right. is part of the reason uh, that in uh, human error for us uh, forecasters when we're looking at a storm and it's moving across the area, that's also why you see some of these polygons so much wider right. than the tornado could be. It accounts for both human error and the error of the radar, because once you see that scan, that storm could and have uh, moved. And also miles. the erratic motion of storms. Yeah, yep. you know, some storms wobble left or wobble right. And so you, you want to draw the box out and go, OK, these areas are under a warning. But you also don't want to um, have to 
We, we almost had this problem last night with one of the storms. It started to crawl outside of the box because it started to move more to the almost north northwest instead of the north. Right. And so you almost had and, and you guys had this with the storm earlier in Grant in uh, I believe Grant Parish where you needed two different tornado warnings for one storm because of the erratic motion uh, that it takes and, and the weather service tries to account for that. But sometimes storms just do weird things. Uh, so again, our tornado warning <coughs> excuse me, our tornado warning storm this tornado warning only goes to 1145, so we only got another minute or so. Continues to trail off to the north and east, so unfortunately it is uh, decision time for the folks at the National Weather Service in Jackson on whether they want to extend the tornado warning for this storm. Um, I really could see it kind of going either way at this point. Uh, we don't make those types of decisions. Um, those decisions are made by the National Weather Service by a team of meteorologists in that area. So uh, the National Weather Service in Jackson uh, will will make a decision on this soon. Uh, like I said, it's we're coming up on 1145, and um, yeah, we're yeah. about a minute shy from the top of the top of the around 1145, and so that's when this morning is set to expire. And if they do continue this, this is going to potentially extend into northern Tensaw Parish and possibly bleed right into the Madison. southwestern section of Madison Parish. So if you live in these areas, I mean, even if the tornado warning doesn't get extended, you definitely need to be careful if you're out and about. You know, you are under a severe thunderstorm warning right, right now, the same areas I we're talking about that are outside of the tornado drawn box right there. So definitely need to be away from the windows. If you are out on the roads, so you need to definitely be careful and right. avoid. Be careful. So that warning has Cancel has it. been allowed to expire at 1145. But before we get too eager to send everybody back to programming, there is this little area in the Buckner area uh, just across the line into Richland Parish. Um, not th nothing overly alarming right now, but I wouldn't be surprised to have some gusty winds associated with that. And as we start to kind of wrap things up, tornado warning wise, at least here in the short term, I just want to remind everybody of the severe thunderstorm warnings that are in place. Go ahead, Trey. I don't mean to uh, cut, cut you off, Jared, but I just want to quickly note, I'm not sure if you can overlay it uh, from links to over there, but Having kind of a trouble uh, linking it from the Weather Service chat, but uh, the Storm Prediction Center it's somewhere around our area because the uh, Shreveport National Weather Service has uh, noted that they've upped the severe weather risk to a slight risk. Yeah, I mean, that's to be expected kind of after the fact. Um, and, and, right. You know, uh, we'll, it, it, we'll, we'll note that and kind of move on with our day. Um, right. Uh, so, uh, and there's a new severe thunderstorm warning, I believe, that's just been issued. Uh, yes, uh, tornado possible, but a new severe thunderstorm warning issued for Caldwell, Grant, LaSalle, and Wynn parishes until 1230. Uh, so a slew of severe thunderstorm warnings now in effect. Um, as you take a look at the live storm tracker Doppler radar, and before we uh, wrap up our, our live coverage on air and online uh, and send you back to your regular programming, I also want to let folks know that we are now live on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and on our website, myarklamist.com. So um, hoping to start bringing severe weather coverage um, in that form uh, every time. So uh, fingers crossed that we can continue to execute that as seamlessly as we have uh, today. Uh, again, we're getting ready to wrap up live on air coverage as we approach the noon time frame. Uh, Arkansas today will be viewed on, uh, on NBC 10. Fox 14 will go back to their regularly scheduled programming and, and be mindful that if a tornado warning is needed with some of this activity, go ahead guys. New tornado, tornado warning. warning. We do have All right. a new tornado warning. It was the same system that we were just discussing earlier and they've just extended that tor tornado warning to include parts of Tinsall and Madison Parish to at least 1245 p.m. That's why we are a little bit slower in sending things back to programming just in case uh, one of these types of things happen. So a uh, new tornado warning has been issued. Um, it will pop up on my screen here shortly. It's already popped up on links um, one if we want to go over to the other um, link system and, uh, and, and pinpoint that out. But yeah, so uh, this was the same area of rotation we were just talking about and we were wondering if the National Weather Service was going to extend that tornado warning or not and they canceled it but they decided to go ahead and extend it because there are still some signs right now of rotation now like Jared mentioned earlier this is entering a very rural area part of Tinsall Parish one of our least populated parishes and it's starting to if it holds up it'll move into Madison Parish just to the south 
of Tallulah right there. Um, you're not included in the tornado warning. However, if, it works, if the system holds up, it will be heading in your direction. But right now, it's in a very rural part of our viewing area, starting to exit Franklin Parish and move into northern Tinsall Parish and then into Madison. All right, so here's the uh, new tornado warning. Again, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado uh, near Gilbert, 12 miles southeast of Winsboro, moving northeast at 30. I would say it is a little east of Gilbert by about three or four miles and continuing to move off to the north and east. So again, this tornado warning includes Franklin, Madison, and Tensaw parishes until 1245. Uh, Tensaw, it is the northwestern corner of Tensaw Parish, does not include Newelton, but does include areas of Highway 65 north of Newelton. It also includes South Central Madison Parish. Does not include Mound, Tallulah, or Waverly or any of those areas. It looks to be areas just south of uh, the interstate along Highway 65. And it also obviously includes far eastern sections of Franklin Parish as uh, the storm continues to move to the northeast relatively slowly. Uh, again, only about 30 miles an hour, so the heavy rain becomes a problem there as well. Um, a lot of areas starting to see roadways covered with raw water. Uh, a lot of um, uh, street flooding being reported specifically in Union Parish. Uh, so be mindful of that. And again, also still watching while we're circling things out that area right there in Richland Parish um, as an as an area of concern. In fact, very concerning at this point. Yeah, Jared, uh, quickly noting that the tornado warning was extended by the National Weather Service. It appears they extended the warning because they noticed the circulation shifted its position, but it still maintained a fairly similar or slightly weaker, but still there circulation. So kind of similar to what we've been saying for a while now, that circulation is kind of just lingering. It's, it's there and it, and it really will not just completely dissipate. No. As long as it's out by itself, I don't see a reason that it would. There's not a reason that it, it just would. All right, and so while we're going ahead and kind of alerting folks, I just want, uh, again, for folks, th th there's gonna be two areas I'm about to circle. Um, one is a tornado warned storm, okay? So the, the, the tornado warning that you see uh, in the flashing red box, that purple circle, that is the concern area for a possible tornado. This area right here, uh, east of Wisner and, uh, and east of Gilbert, will be moving into northwestern. This is Tensaw Parish, Madison Parish, here's Tallulah, here's Delhi. But also this area right here in Frank in, in uh, Richland Parish, just across the Washita line, that area right there has one of those almost inflow notch type signatures with it. Uh, and, and you start to see the winds kind of twisting in together there. Not a tornado warning, but a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. That is an area that will watch uh, and, and I would be off the roads and sheltered if I was in that area in Richland Parish. Again, no tornado warning issued with it, but if you're south of Ravel and along 425 uh, between Ravel and Winsboro, I would really keep an eye on that particular part of that one storm here in the short term. So again, to recap, tornado warning in effect for Tensaw, Madison, and Franklin parishes until 1245. Also keeping an eye on that Richland Parish storm. Numerous severe thunderstorm warnings also in effect. So uh, we'll be uh, carrying uh, through at least the lunchtime time frame here uh, with what we're dealing with right now. What Jared is showing you is certainly more pressing and a more urgent issue, but just want to quickly note, especially if you're around the uh, Louisiana, Arkansas state line, Union Parish just got a report that we have some closures of roadways. State Highway 33 north of Farmerville, Highway 2 just east of Farmerville city limits, and Highway 828 near Dean Road, uh, resulting from a culvert blowout and have now been closed until further notice. All right, thanks, uh, Trey. Again, this uh, tornado will be eventually now moving into Tensaw Parish, or possible tornado will be moving into Tensaw Parish. And again, I keep kind of drawing things out on screen and kind of walking back over here to kind of pinpoint it. But you can, the, the, the arrow that I've kind of drawn here, it, it kind of illustrates the inflow notch. And I know if you're watching this from a Facebook live stream, you can't, you can't even see what I'm talking about right now. But I've drawn a little arrow here, just showing kind of the winds kind of 
feeding in to this line and, and where it could create that low level rotation. And it's you start thinking about almost the swirl of a bathtub drain in the low levels of the atmosphere. And all it takes is just that small thing uh, that can get that can get something going. And for folks south of Ravel uh, along 425, that that is a I'm not going to say concerning. It's just a peculiar area that I, I would be, if I was in the path of that storm, Mangum, Ravel, all the way down to Winsboro, there's probably some 60 mile an hour wind gusts at least to be had there. And maybe, um, you know, a, a, there could be a possible tornado forming. Yeah, there's, like you said, there's definitely signs of rotation just to the south of Ravel, moving near uh, Mangum right now. And it's, again, not a tornado warning. It's not been issued or anything like that, but there is definitely signs of rotation Nothing's on the ground. This is what we're just believe what we're looking at right here. Nothing's been confirmed or anything like that. I don't want to alarm anybody with this particular storm moving into Richland Parish right now. But yeah, if you live out ahead of that main line, Mangham, Rayville, and stretching to Delhi, Winsboro, this storm, it's heading in your direction. This is definitely not a time to really be out and about, especially out on the roadways, if at all possible. You can avoid travel. I would definitely avoid that if you can. And if you, you know, have the severe thunderstorm warning currently in effect for Richland Parish, so even if nothing tornadic comes out of it, we still have 60 mile per hour wind gusts that's been indicated with these storms that can still cause yeah. potential Chase, damage. Uh, Chase, something he, Chase did earlier, I pointed out the wobble potential of that storm and what Jared was noting just a couple minutes ago, how it shifted further north and we needed two warnings. We were talking prior to that about, um, I don't believe, I don't remember what specific community it was, but there was a city right near the warning that wasn't in it, but we said you are far too close for comfort and it takes one small shift of the storm and it's going to come right up through your area and that's kind of the area and the potential that we're seeing Mangum's not necessarily right in the path of this storm but given a small shift of the line Mangum could see an increase in not only winds but torrential rainfall as well you're going to see that anyway but that notch is very close to the city of Mangum and we saw with here in West Monroe and looking at that traffic cam you know, the visibility with this storm, it's going to drop. As soon as that main red squall line hits your area, the visibility just drops outside. That's the reason why if you're out and about on the road, right. you just need to be extra careful. You know, if you have to pull over, pull over if you have to, all right? It's just not a, a advice at all to be traveling, especially along Highway 425 from Rayville down through Winsboro, and especially further down as, as you get to Gilbert and Winsner, who have, you know, on the back side of that tornado warning, but that same squall line stretches all the way down past Winsboro and Gilbert. Yeah. You guys will be picking up, picking up on the and rainfall within the next 30 minutes. I also think that line is eventually about to catch up with our supercell. Uh, and that may be the only thing that ends up disrupting this one little cell is the line that's about to catch up to it from behind. So uh, again, to kind of go back uh, after we've talked about so much, and there's a lot of stuff to cover on a day that we really weren't expecting a widespread severe weather day. Uh, there is a lot of stuff to talk about, but the tornado warning uh, in Franklin, Tensaw, Madison Parish is, uh, is still the, uh, the top precedent. This is uh, State Highway 4. Here's the ferry, uh, ferry new light landing communities, the new, uh, new quarters community, Tinsel Bluff, Hopewell Landing, uh, the lower line communities back out to the west. Uh, this is now moving firmly into Tinsel Parish. So again, uh, make sure that you're uh, sheltered, uh, interior portions of your home away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. As we said earlier, I just want folks to be mindful of the fact that if you're watching on social media, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on our website, if you're even watching on television in some form or fashion, this signal is delayed. So start thinking a minute, two minutes ahead of time. Think if you're in the new quarters community, you want to be sheltered now. You don't want to wait until for me to tell you that because it may be too late for, for, for you if, if I say, okay, this storm's over new quarters. You, you're, you're getting that information depending on transmission of technology, you could be getting that a minute, minute and a half, two minutes late. So just be sheltered now. Uh, the the Tensaw Bluff community moving into, as we mentioned, rural sections of northwestern Tensaw Parish. There's not a, a, a lot of uh, highly populated areas, but we just want you folks, you all, you're our neighbors, you know, make sure that you're sheltered. Make sure you're in your safe place. Go ahead, Trey. Uh, something to also throw out there, 
Uh, I'm not quite sure if we're currently there, but we were at one point for an extended period of time. Uh, Chelsea, our news director, uh, sent us a message that we were at least for an extended period of time live on YouTube. So if you... I think we are, yeah. Yeah, so if, if you have somebody in the younger crowd, maybe teen or uh, mid-20s that doesn't necessarily get on Facebook or watch television, uh, and they have a smart TV or just their cell phone, they can pull up our stream on the YouTube, and, and that's very accessible, and that will help a lot of folks, I think. All right, so, so we have um, a large area, and again, just trying to kind of reset for folks that are joining us. All of those yellow boxes that you see on your screen are different severe thunderstorm warnings. Most of them have been issued relatively recently and the main concern with that line would be damaging wind gusts. A tornado can't be ruled out within that line, but the main concern will be damaging wind gusts. And when you look at the structure of, of that big kind of cluster of storms as it moves off to the east, um, uh, you know, that's 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 still the main driving force with all those warnings is the damaging wind potential. Uh, maybe some small hail, but uh, the hail is really an afterthought with any of the storms today. Again, the tropical in, uh, nature of the environment uh, just doesn't really foster a lot of hail production. It's going to be winds and isolated tornado activity. All of the new severe thunderstorm warnings that have been issued extend to at least one o'clock this afternoon and the current tornado warning, which is the main reason we're currently on air right now, it's still expected to last till about 1245. So we'll at least be on the air for the next 45 minutes for this particular tornado warning. However, we still have multiple severe thunderstorm warnings that are in effect that are been indicating produced 60 mile per hour wind gusts indicated by radar. So again, it's definitely not a great day to be out and about, especially as I mentioned earlier along Highway 425 from Rayville, stretching down to Winsboro. I would say Monroe and West Monroe are currently on the back side of that main stretch, and what we're going to be dealing with the rest of the day is just light to moderate rainfall, which could potentially uh, lead to minor flooding and flash flooding in a lot of places because we've already picked up on a lot of heavy rainfall just now, and then there's still a lot more to follow, stretching all the way back towards Ruston and Minden. So there's still a lot more rain to follow. We're definitely not done with the rain for that matter, but we still have the, the strong thunderstorms moving through parts of Caldwell, Richland, uh, Franklin, Madison, Tinsall Parish right now. And if you live along the Mississippi River Valley towards the, around the Vicksburg area, stretching on the Louisiana side, East Carroll Parish, Madison, Tinsall, Concordia, you know, you're gonna be picking up on these storms within the next hour or two. So you want to make, go ahead and get ready and if you can, uh, delay travel if you possibly can because these storms will be moving in your direction here before too much longer. Also, don't forget a flash flood warning has uh, now also been issued for Union County, Union Parish, and Claiborne Parish till 3. Again, kind of just piggybacking off of just how much heavy rainfall we're dealing with in the area. And also for folks that may have pulled over on the side of the road and, or, or, or pulled off into a convenience store or a grocery store or something waiting for the tornadic storm to pass. Keep in mind you got this cluster of storms rushing in behind you um, that's going to bring some heavy rain as well. Yeah, and just with him, uh, Jared noting that, uh, another thought that popped in my mind, a lot of times uh, Jared will say something and it brings a thought to my mind. Uh, just want to note, I saw some folks doing it yesterday in a, uh, out in Texas, but if you ever find yourself out on the roadways, I know it's tempting, but do not ever pull under an overpass to avoid a heavy thunderstorm or a tornadic circulation. It enhances the wind and almost makes it sort of like a wind tunnel, and it increases the uh, power of that wind as it goes through. That's one of the worst things you could do in a situation like but this. I'm going to be very, very honest with you. I know this part of Tinsaw Parish, not a lot of overpasses there. Uh, there really isn't, because uh, because again, the interstate doesn't go through there. Um, this is a part where there's not very many major highways that go through this particular area, so there's not really that opportunity to go under. But yes, that is a huge no-no. And, no -no. and so that's that why out. local uh, meteorologists, that's why we're still here, because Jared's got that knowledge of the geography. He can just look and he knows he's been there, and uh, you know yeah, it's just, also it, your area like, too. So this is a this is there's not a lot of people in these areas, and I'm, I'm just right. being honest. And if you if you know Tensaw Parish, and you know this part of Tensaw Parish, you know that this is more um, hunting camps and wildlife refuge things of that nature than it is you know uh, subdivisions and neighborhoods and things uh, uh, of that sort. But right. but there, there's still the, um, uh, 
you know, farm farmhouses and and folks that live there. That's their land and that's People's their property. Lives. So yeah, yeah, we, got, we definitely got to uh, uh, keep that in mind. Our our velocity signature that we had earlier in in Richland Parish, uh, the Ravel folks uh, along Highway 425, that is really kind of started to gust out again. Um, it, it, it's not necessarily tornadic. Um, it looks to be more damaging wind at this point, and, and the greens that you see tucked back, the brighter greens, are kind of almost contamination at this point with the, the radar signature. So uh, I don't, uh, when, when, when you see the bright greens, yeah, you normally think rotation, but uh, in many instances, that's not always the case. Again, it, it does take a trained eye to kind of read some of that stuff. Uh, and, and those instances. Uh, so again, tornado warning in effect till 1245 as we are starting to kind of lose a little bit of the organization and circulation with, and I, and I want to kind of keep an eye on this storm back to the west as well, the cluster back to the west, but our, our storm and our, our area of rotation is starting to kind of wobble back to the northwest a little bit, may already be in southern portions of uh, Madison Parish at this point. That, yeah, they have shaved off the warning for Franklin Parish. Franklin Parish is no longer included Good. in the tornado warning. It's only northern Tinsaw Parish and the southwestern section of Madison Parish, just to the south of Tallulah. Tallulah is not in the tornado warning, but they have shaved off Franklin Parish but there's still, again, weak signs of rotation, but it's starting to a little get harder to see as it's moving closer to the Mississippi yep. River. If you're more familiar with the north central part of the Arklamis and areas to the east, this is uh, 15 miles east of Winsboro, moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. Yep, near the New Light communities. Um, and like I said, moving now, more more or less into southern Madison Parish and, and again so while, while I kind of leave these things on the screen for you for a brief period of time I'm also trying to give everybody that point of reference before I bounce back out to this zoomed out vantage point of what we're seeing currently so the purple circle area is our uh, purple circled area is our possible tornado yellow is severe thunderstorm warnings Red is a tornado warning. So uh, again, a lot of different colors. Uh, and I'm talking about the yellows and reds in terms of boxes on screen. Obviously, the yellows and reds here are all rainfall uh, as that continues to surge uh, eastward. So that very small circled area right here. And for those that are watching us on social media and may not be able to see the circle, uh, it's this area right here. Uh, northwestern sections of Tensaw Parish, right along the Tensaw Madison line there, uh, moving into southern Madison Parish. That's where our possible tornado would reside. Then a pretty menacing line of storms stretching from Bastrop, winding all the way to near uh, Ravel, or maybe a little bit farther east of Ravel, southward right along Highway 425, and then tucking all the way back to the west southwest towards uh, Winfield and uh, Pollock and some of those areas. Uh, some damaging wind gusts certainly to be had, some very heavy rainfall. A lot of spots have seen some torrential rain today, and so uh, keep that in mind. For folks in the tornado warning, guess what? You've got the line of storms coming in behind you. So if you're sheltered or if you're off the roads in Tensaw and Madison parishes, you probably need to stay sheltered and off the roads in Tensaw and Madison Parish. I would say the warning goes until 1245, but I would say it's a safe assumption that you're probably going to need to stay sheltered till upwards to 2 o'clock in the afternoon because you got the line coming in afterwards. And certainly something else to notice about the structure of that segment that's warned Notice the difference between our storms here, and this is something we talk about a lot because it, it closely relates to people's safety and taking pictures and videos. Number one, we don't want you to compromise your safety to send us a picture or video ever. And right. number two, if you'll notice the stronger areas of wind and rain uh, and reflectivity on this particular product, notice how it's surrounded by an area of green. All these storms that come through, tornadic or not, well, there is, if there is a tornadic circulation, it's going to be rain wrapped. What that means is in this part of the country, you're going to have a very difficult time spotting a circulation or albeit if there was a tornado on the ground, unless it's a large uh, violent tornado that you can easily pick out in the sky. But uh, most likely it'll be very hard. All you're yep. going to see is a wall of wind and water unless it's already past you and you're checking it out from the backside. So we never want anybody to take a picture of a tornado. If you if if you know, obviously people take pictures and videos of tornadoes all the time and they send them in and yes, TV stations put them on the air and we probably shouldn't because we tell folks not to do that. But uh, we don't want you to take those pictures. We don't want you to take those videos. If you want to send in pictures of damage or, or something that you observe after the fact, great. But that's not even a good idea in Tensaw Parish right now. 
because you got the line coming in after right. the fact. It's going to bring more heavy rain and e wind and things of that nature. Easily to be trapped between the two. Right. And there are a lot of folks, like we we can tell you over and over again until we're blue in the face. There's a new to tornado warning. New yeah. yeah, this is the, uh, the one that we were talking about in Richland Parish earlier. Uh, and uh, so let's go ahead and go with that one. Uh, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado near Ravel, moving northeast 45 miles per hour. So Ravel, you're under the path in the path of this possible tornado. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out and uh, take a closer look um, at the velocity. Yeah, it would be pretty much right over I-20 here in Ravel um, is where that possible tornado would be. Doesn't necessarily imply that it's um, an overly strong area. Um, in fact, I would say it may have looked even stronger a smidge earlier um, when we were watching it, but uh, there, there's your new tornado warning. So uh, two tornado warnings out now to carry us the, past the lunchtime time frame into um, the early afternoon. Uh, the, the latest one until one o'clock uh, does include folks right along I-20. And now all of Trey's tips that he just gave you earlier about not going under overpasses and things of that nature, that's where this comes into play. Don't go under an overpass pullover. I saw the tornadoes um, uh, a couple weeks ago in central Arkansas and folks were pulling under uh, the 630 and 430 uh, overpasses. Don't do that. Find a store. It's the middle of the afternoon, and there's a lot of stuff along I-20 in Rabel. Uh, there's grocery stores, there's fast food restaurants, there's all types to take your pick. Pull over, wait for the storm to pass, wait for this line to pass, and, and clear your area, and then you can resume your travel. Um, if For a point of last refuge, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, somehow pulled over on the side of the interstate and you don't know what to do and you feel like you're in a tornado, refuge of last resort is to, um, uh, to exit your vehicle and ditch. lie flat in a ditch or a culvert. Yep. That may be tough to do because of all the heavy rainfall that we've received. So, uh, again, we want you to think proactively and preemptively uh, on this end. You don't want to get stuck out on the roadway uh, with this possible tornado as it starts to trail to the north and east. So this tornado warning does include Richland, West Carroll, uh, East Carroll, and Madison Parishes. So Madison Parish technically under two different tornado warnings for two different storms at this point as it moves off to the north and east. You guys have that highlighted. Um, tough to really pinpoint any particular area. Um, so I would just say folks anywhere along and north of Highway 80 and I-20 and south of Highway 80 and I-20 need to be sheltered right now. Yeah, regardless, I mean, it's near the Ravel area, and it's about to uh, cross over the I-20 corridor, probably between Delhi and Rayville, if it continues the track it's going. If you live within the Rayville and Delhi communities, you need to start heading to your tornado safe place right now. And then further down the polygon, further into West and East Carroll Parish, we have the community of Epps, there's Forest, we have Lake Providence that's actually included in the tornado warning that extends into along the Mississippi River to East Carroll Parish, and that's if, of course, the system holds up. But this will be on for at least the next 50 minutes. It's 1210 right now, and this will uh, expect it to last till about 1 p.m. That's how long the tornado warning is. So that's the newest one that we have, two in total, and Madison is now under two tornado warnings. But it kind of looks like the, the, the new one that we have is just going to clip a northern section of it. The Ma people in Madison Parish, I would be more concerned with the one below that, just to the south of Tallulah, if that one continues to hold up and cross the 65, Highway 65 corridor. Uh, very quickly, I'm just going to switch over from the radar screen. Uh, I'm checking to see how many power outages we have. It does not look like we have many. Um, I was just going to make sure that we're not you know, losing track of a bigger issue here. If you are watching us in some of these areas that are under tornado warnings, um, not a bad idea. Uh, if you haven't been, uh, charge your mobile device. Um, you know, if, if you're going to lose power uh, in Ravel and some of these surrounding areas, um, you know, you want to make sure that you have your, your cell, cellular device uh, uh, charged and, and ready to go. I'm going to leave links two up for uh, very quickly. I'm actually going to try to call uh, Kyla Scott, who lives in that general area. And okay. Um, uh, first thing to note, I was actually about to mention, if you notice the particular shape and size of the polygon, and notice how it's a bit larger and more rectangular than the polygons we've been seeing. This is another one of those instances, Chase, where we're very thankful for the technology we have here at in West Monroe at the KTV, KRD, NBC10, Fox 14 studios. Because if you'll notice, 
the particular location of these two warnings, especially the one to the north, without the Monroe radar site here, the West Monroe site, it's placed directly between Weather Service uh, Shreveport and Weather Service Jackson. Even the Weather Service noting in the chat, um, it says they, they are noting some features with the segment, but also uh, there it's tough to see due to distance from radar. So this is where we're thankful for that technology. And Chase, uh, I'm gonna step up here real quick and if there's anything you want me to point out quickly. Now, the biggest things they're really pointing out is the two tornado warnings right now and the one that's just been issued between Rayville and Delhi. Those two areas need to be in their tornado safe place right now. And if you live within the Epps, Lake Providence, you need to uh, also pay attention because this storm system will be in your area. I'll go ahead and do a little storm track from the area of rotation towards Lake Providence and the Mississippi River Valley going that direction. It'll be in the Epps community around 1224. Forest Just a second, Chase. Uh, Justin, if we could take links Lake one, Providence. Chase is uh, about to, uh, there's a storm track we were referring to. Yeah, we'll switch over to links one if we could. There we go, you're good. Okay, yeah, so I'll just re-mention what I just said. Epps at 1224, Forest at 1232, and it'll be at Lake Providence at about 1238. So you have about 20 minute leadway here before the storm system makes it to your area. Now, of course, the area of Rayville and Delhi, it's already right around your area and you need to be in your tornado safe place right now. If you live in the communities I just mentioned, you have about a ten, five to 10 minute window there to start heading to your tornado safe place. But we've been talking about these storms, how they're moving very slowly, about 15, 20 miles per hour. Now, yeah, this segment, this this uh, Ravel segment's moving a little bit faster. It's moving at 45. So, um, and, and it's because it's the Boeing segment. Uh, and so that Boeing segment's going to move a little bit faster than the little lone supercell that you had out there. So as Chase zooms out, Trey's on screen with you, uh, kind of uh, pointing things out uh, as you see them. I, I just called uh, Kyla Scott, who uh, is our Fox, uh, our NBC 10 anchor and uh, she lives out in Richland Parish and so I was just going to check and see uh, and she said it's raining and windy but uh, they had already seen the worst kind of come through her area uh, and uh, nothing there so uh, again we're just kind of keeping an eye on on two different uh, tornado worn storms that uh, are, are pretty menacing right now Trey. Uh, yeah Jared uh, and also question uh, while you were out I noticed and Chase and I were discussing that the uh, Radar, the radar, our radar is situated in a good spot to particularly uh, see this system here and see this storm. And we were wondering, the National Weather Service radar is a little, a little far off to see a, a lower level scan. And we were wondering if you, you see maybe anything uh, extra or it's not, not noted yet with our uh, closer scan of the storm. Not really. And, and, the, and the other kicker with our radar is now we're kind of catching the the back edge uh, of these storms. So we're having to go through uh, some pretty consistent rain and some pretty heavy rainfall to kind of see the front edge of this storm. But that said, this tornado warning was explicitly issued, not necessarily for one particular area, but just for the possibility of a of a spin up tornado. Spin up does not imply weak, but uh, it, it, in this instance, it, it would probably be a, uh, a, a, you know, maybe a 90 or 100 mile an hour wind tornado, maybe even weaker than that. But again, just a brief tornado that could form within that seg segment as it moves off to the east. Yeah, and whether there's a brief tornado that forms or not, uh, it's also uh, really important to note if you're in these areas that uh, whether there's a small tornado that forms or not, you're also going to see those damaging winds because this whole segment's bowing out. The whole segment that's highlighted here, you notice the whole bowing segment, but this was issued due to kind of a kink in the line here kind of seeing it align with some wind shear values, which means a turning with height, but also it's the whole segment's bowing out. So whether you see a weak spin up tornado or not, you're going to see some pretty strong winds there, which can cause yeah. damage alone. EF zero tornadoes produce usually 70, 80 mile an hour winds, right? Yeah. This severe thunderstorm warning is for 60 mile an hour winds. Tomato, tomato, it doesn't really matter uh, whether you're seeing straight line winds or a tornado. It's still enough to down trees. It's still enough to cause structural damage and you still need to be sheltered off the roads. Yeah, right. if you reach 60 miles per hour and <clears throat> onward, that is the criteria the Weather Service kind of puts out that where you can start to see damage to tr uh, trees, top of uh, homes and businesses, mobile homes can start seeing structural damage at six, 60 plus miles per hour winds. You don't necessarily need that tornado, straight line winds of 60 to 70, that'll do it for any mobile home and it'll definitely cause damage for homes and businesses, especially poor structured areas, you know, and as we're starting to enter a little bit closer into the Mississippi River Valley, you know, it's, it's getting more rural. We're out of our area here in Monroe, mm -hmm. and as we get closer to the Mississippi River Valley, we're getting <coughs> entering a lot of rural areas 
and small communities. And it's just really important that you know you're paying attention to, you know from Rayville to Delhi, Elps. Lake Providence, this storm, it's heading in your direction. So, you need to be in a safe place and start heading to there now, especially you, around the Delhi area. And you, you were talking about higher populated areas, you know, Ravel, Delhi, Epps um, are, are um, three of the, the bigger cities and towns in those areas. And so again, uh, for folks that are watching us there, just please be sheltered. Let's go back over to Links 2 real quick, uh, kind of give a broader scope of everything and also to outline this very large severe thunderstorm warning that's just been issued uh, the big yellow box that stretches into adjacent sections of Mississippi uh, that is a, a severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 1:30. Uh, includes Madison excuse me just a second Madison and Tensaw parishes it also includes Claiborne Issaquina and Warren counties in Mississippi which is outside of our viewing area uh, but uh, damaging wind gusts are a main concern here again Hail, if you do see any, would be small, maybe upwards to nickel sized at its largest uh, if, if we can. But this is not an, an environment that's going to produce hail. It's heavy rain, winds, and these isolated tornado uh, spin ups that we've been dealing with uh, through much of the morning and even dating back to last night. I will say also on that note, and, and, and we've just kind of left Trey sitting there just kind of standing in front of the screen. Sorry <laughs> about that. But, you know, um, on that note, We've really kind of started to lose this southern storms rotation. Um, I'm not saying that it's not forming a tornado. I'm just saying from our vantage point and our radar, we're really struggling to see anything there. And the National Weather Service and Jackson's radar is not necessarily picking up anything either. So um, I'm going to put you on velocities mode there, Trey, so you can kind of okay. see what we're talking about. And I'll go ahead and circle some things out while you kind of talk yeah, things okay. through. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this southerly storm definitely not as concerning as it once was. Now this is a storm, if I'm correct, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the circulation we've been monitoring. This kind of lingered for quite a while and yep. kept us on air for so long, not necessarily producing anything, but that circulation's still there. So we we see it and know the potential is there, whether it puts it down or not. Rather be safe than sorry. But uh, with this Boeing segment here, that's when we start to kind of monitor with large Boeing segments in the line. You, our main concern with those is first and foremost damaging winds, but when we see a kink in the line, that's where we can kind of see some circulation start to fire up. Now, not to say this is uh, intensifying greatly by any means, but it's just a notable kink in the line. The rest of it down to the south following this tornado warning, which is going to move into the Cholula and eventually Vicksburg area, that's going to be followed by that damaging wind. So whether anything's being produced out in this area in the southerly storm, it's going to be quickly followed by torrential rainfall, damaging winds, and you can see the, the uh, winds themselves there. And just very quickly, because I know Chase has got something, but um, wanted to note that uh, you know, referring to the damaging tornado being an EF0 still causing damage, that's something probably said at least 50 times on the morning show when we're right. talking about a severe risk later on in the day. An EF0 comes down your street, that's a bad day. And you have winds equaling that, so you got anything blowing at 70 plus miles per hour in a straight line, that's dangerous. Yeah, and on that note, Trey, a lot of these areas, and we've said this a lot, have seen a lot of rainfall. So now the ground is saturated, which means trees and root systems are yep. saturated, where now we're getting to a point where even some 40 or 50 mile an hour wind gusts, if, if you have a weak tree that is already kind of puny or it's kind of on its last leg and it's struggling already as is, we have some of those in our neighborhood, you know, a 40 or 50 mile an hour wind gusts when the ground's soggy like this, they can uproot very, very easily because of the saturated ground. So that's just something to keep in mind. The latest updated status message has a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado near Holly Ridge, which is generally right along and north of I-20 east of Ravel, near Delhi or, or near Delhi, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. Again, I've circled a very elongated area there, just kind of all within the width of that tornado warning. A tornado right. could really form in any general area in that spot. Right, yeah, and with that kink in the line, with it's not necessarily, like I mentioned, no, I mentioned sound like a broken record, but not necessarily seeing it progress in its uh, what we call tornado genesis, which means the process in which tornadoes are created and form, basically just meaning we're not seeing this progress right at this moment, knock on wood, uh, that anything that would indicate a tornado is progressing and getting ready to drop. However, there's still that kink in the line where we could see something form. If it does, that's where it would be in this particular polygon, the uh, northern tornado warning. But the southern tornado warning, 
kind of moving more to the south and almost out of our viewing area eventually uh, pretty soon. But uh, you'll notice that Circulation Jared has circled there. Just a minor area of, of concern there in that southerly storm. And I'd say definitely the northerly storm is more concerning at the moment well, than the southerly storm. And, and also just again want to preface by saying that southernmost tornado warning that's in southern Madison Parish we're not getting a good look radar. It's moving farther away from our radar. Uh, we're talking about, we're looking at this storm now at about 4,000 feet and getting and getting higher and higher as it moves farther and farther away. So, uh, and it's also, again, we're, we're looking through a lot of heavy rainfall. So, uh, again, we still have the best vantage point out of anybody, but it, it's not a good one by any stretch. So, I just want to kind of Make that note. Um, also, that, that circulation, that possible tornado should be approaching Highway 65, which is one of the uh, more traveled roads uh, south out of, of Madison Parish. So, again, if you're exiting right. the Tallulah Richmond area and heading south on 65, that's where that possible tornado is right now. Uh, should be crossing the highway here shortly. Approaching the Mississippi River, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, well, but, yeah, uh, it's got about another 20 miles. Right. And once it does so, it, uh, there's, that's important to note. I've said that a few times today, but there are certain things that we like to hammer out during events like these. And one of those that's important now and kind of uh, relatable here is this: as this approaches the Mississippi River, we hear a lot of chatter usually when it crosses a lake or a body of water, a tornadic circulation or a tornado. For some reason, there's a myth that it will be affected or diluted in some way, if you have a circulation strong enough, it's just going to go right on over it and continue on to the other side. So not to say that there's a tornado on the ground or even circulation that uh, tells us that one's about to form, but uh, the circulation shouldn't be affected as far as dissipating strictly by crossing the Mississippi River. Yeah, new severe thunderstorm warning now out for Concordia and Tensaw parishes, also adjacent sections of Mississippi for 60 mile an hour winds. That's a new severe thunderstorm warning goes until 2 o'clock. You can see it on the bottom part of your screen. Uh, southern sections of Tensaw Parish and Northern Concordia Parish includes uh, Natchez, Faraday, Vidalia, Waterproof, and some of those surrounding areas again until 2 o'clock. As Jared has you kind of zoomed out here, uh, note that a lot of the areas in uh, Washita Parish here have kind of gotten a lull. It's still raining decently uh, heavy around the area, but much lighter than it had been when these strong gusty winds and the main line moved on through. But behind that, areas like Ruston seeing the secondary not as wide and not as dense of a system of storms, but that's going to quickly move into sections of Washita Parish, and that's another round of heavy rainfall and moisture accumulation to just add on to already saturated grounds and potentially flooded roadways. Yeah, and with two tornado warnings out, I don't want to go to this right now, but um, uh, again, just estimating radar uh, or estimating rain totals in some of these areas, there's got to be some spots that have seen at least three or four inches of rain today alone, and then you tack on anywhere from one to three inches of rain that you've seen earlier this week, and that's why we're starting to, to see those the green boxes pop up, and in fact, I don't even have those on the screen just because they're it, it's so incredibly messy, but I'll go ahead and show them briefly. Those are the flash flood warnings that we have in effect uh, across the area currently. So uh, again, just keep that in mind. I'm going to even take down all the watches and those are all different warnings that are in effect, whether they be flood warnings or flash flood warnings and all the, the bright green individual boxes are flash flood warnings. So again, just to kind of bring and drive the point home, we've seen a lot of heavy rainfall and that's going to continue to become an issue as well. Right, and uh, Chase, kind of want to throw it to you here quickly, but uh, something that we saw this morning, kind of been, as you know, training Chase on the morning show, but uh, as he was getting more uh, acclimated this morning, we actually were looking at his, his future tracker for rainfall accumulation, and it showed, I believe, what, uh, above four to five inches, and we were kind of discussing amongst ourselves whether we thought that was potentially achievable, and this whole system kind of came not necessarily out of left field, but some of these tornadic potentials and these circulations, as well as the heaviness of the rainfall potential, some of it was expected, but it's actually uh, performing quite well compared to the expectations. Yeah, we had the feature cast showing from Ruston to Shreveport, possibly yes, five to six inches of rainfall just for today alone, and then 
stretching from Monroe towards Tallulah along the, it's been mainly along the I-20 corridor where the heaviest rain was expected, where we could, we're looking at two to three inches, and that's all within a very short amount of time. And when you get that much rainfall at one point, you know, there's nowhere for that water to go. With the ground already saturated, right. that's how you start to get those build up and some low-lying roadways, it just starts to pond up on the roadways. And even if you're driving through downtown or any air, low-lying area, you just have those standing water and there's just nowhere for it to go. And so it just starts to pile up and pond in a lot of areas and it's not really safe to drive through and especially walk in any of those areas right. you know in neighborhoods and stuff like that you see on hurricanes and stuff like that when there's neighborhoods underwater and stuff like that it's not good at all to be treading uh, through those waters because there's just like potential sewer backup and things like that and right. with all the rain that we're seeing absolutely correct Arkansas right. all the way down to Winfield Columbia it's just yep. a lot of rain and there's just nowhere for it to go and it's just going to be ponding up on some of these low-lying areas and you're going to see those creek beds start to get come out of their banks a little bit and start to bleed a little bit right. into some like some back back road areas you know On on that note, guys, um, we, I, I get, just did get a, a viewer picture in um, from the Swampers community, which is uh, it's in it's uh, Franklin Parish, kind of south of Crowville, um, uh, kind of off um, you know 17 and 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 off off the beaten path, if you will. Um, there there has been some small hail. Um, it hasn't been severe, uh, but I would say probably from what I could tell, it was like dime to nickel. Um, so it wasn't overly huge. Um, as we take a look at these storms, again, uh, Trey's kind of standing there with you on the screen with uh, the tornado warnings uh, in effect till one uh, for East Carroll, West Carroll, parts of Richland and Northwestern Madison Parish, and then until right. 1245 for Northern Tensaw and Southern Madison Parish. And for all intents and purposes, it looks as though our line has kind of caught up to the supercell and right. I think we've undercut that supercell. I've, I've, yeah, okay, the tornado warning just dropped off. Yeah. I, I was just saying, I've lost that circulation completely. Yep. Yes. I saw nothing there. And uh, finally, so that's, uh, we finally have been yeah, proved right. Good so news. We've been discussing all morning and discussing how it would cut off eventually. Hopefully that's what would get us out of the pickle, if you will, and kind of cut off the last remaining life support of this particular cell that was producing that rotation. And like Jared said, that's kindly starting, kind of starting to occur. And as the main line starts to catch the uh, folks or the storms, if you will, personifying, but the ones that were out ahead of the main line, that's when they kind of start to congeal and it transition really from more of a uh, singular threat from those storms right. and also a small tornado threat to an even less tornadic threat and a damaging wind potential we've, as well. We've really also kind of lost that storm on the northern edge too. Yeah, uh, that, I, 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 I don't want to say that too preemptively. If you're under a warning, stay sheltered, but it, it, it doesn't look Near yeah. as menacing as it Can't did. Can't quite see it here, but I, is that the notch? Did it move a little bit out of the polygon to the right here? Yeah, I'll, I'll zoom in for you, Trey. I, I, me and me and Chase were kind of I mean, just making eye contact off screen, just kind of talking about how it, it, yeah. it, the, the, the main gap where, where that, and I'm going right. to switch over to the National Weather Service in Jackson as well, and it kind of shows the same thing. That northern flank is just kind of fizzled real quick. And, right. And, um, so we may we may get another tornado warning to get canceled if, if it continues on this trend. Right. Still be sheltered if you're there though. Yeah, I, I mean, it's yeah, still be sheltered as long as the warning's in place, but uh, sure. not to get into the weeds or anything, but something we look for, uh, we look for uh, something called a weak echo region, and that is not as present at the moment, which would basically mean uh, the, the rain's got to so go somewhere when you have what you call a mesocyclone in the air, and as it does so, that's when we start to see the hooks and the uh, backward C hook echoes, that would indicate a tornado and strengthening rotation, but if you notice, it's not quite as tight here as it was just a few minutes ago. It wasn't all that tight before, but really starting to kind of become a little sparse here. Of course, you see this line out uh, to the east of Bastrop, but really this looks like it's more of a bow at the moment as well. And then the line that where we were watching that rotation is kind of fragmented a little bit. You're seeing some fragments and a little bit of an indentation, but nothing I would really say is a kink in the line or a hook. Yeah. I'd now, to be honest with you, Trey, I don't see much of anything. Uh, and again, it, it's really simply put because it, it, it is that that uh, that that line, that convective right. complex, and something can spin up so quickly uh, in such a brief period. And that's, to be honest with you, why the tornado warning hasn't been canceled yet is because uh, you right. want to err on the side of caution. The last thing you want to do is cancel a tornado warning and then have right. to reissue one. That right. is the worst case scenario. And that's why you you. 
I haven't seen the National Weather Service have to do that in 15 years because yes. it's just that that's that's really bad for the general public right. uh, to alert them, tell them they're fine, and then tell them, oh, wait, never mind. No, you're not. You're, you need to get covered again. So that's right. why these tornado warnings, sometimes a lot of folks will look and go, why have they not just canceled it? It's airing on the side of caution. Right. Um, I had somebody ask me last night, why don't you guys just join on air on television once a tornado has been confirmed? It's too late at that point. Yeah. Uh, it, exactly. it, so, so that's why these warnings are issued preemptively, and, yeah. and, and especially on a day like today. It's a really weird setup for severe weather today, and, and I don't like using the word weird very often, but it, it is. It's just an odd, um, uh, delicate, complicated setup today. That's also uh, what Jared's talking about kind of also relates back to it all goes back to the safety of the viewers and the safety of the general public because the motto of the National Weather Service and also our mission here is to protect life and property and which is that's why we come on when there's tornado warnings and damaging a potential with the weather of any kind or it could be an environmental situation but say all that to say uh, our, our main mission here is to keep you safe and above all else we'll always be here to do that and one reason we stay on the air whether it's uh, when there's a, a weakening circulation or a weakening storm system that seems to lose uh, rotation is because you give folks a lot more warnings we found through social science that uh, folks the more warnings you hear the less likely you are to react when a warning is issued. Yeah, I'll switch places with you there, right, Trey. Yeah, so you've been standing there for a few minutes, yeah. and uh, but yeah, <laughs> all but yeah, over. it's all it's all like I said, you know, as as we start seeing kind of a downward trend in the overall intensity, and, and while we we do need to stay with you on air in the event that something briefly spins up along this line, and while we stay with this active tornado warning uh, across East Carroll and West Carroll parishes, just trying to explain some of the methodology behind, you know, you, when you get an isolated tornado like this. We, we try to get as hyper local as we possibly can. Um, if, if we can pinpoint a tornado down to its street, uh, and, and if you've watched this for a long time, you know we can at times do that. If we can do it, we will do it. If we can't do it, we try to get as specific as we can in a general area. That way you folks can be informed. When it comes to severe thunderstorm warnings like this, the reason we don't cut into your programming all the time for things like this, one, we get in my 16 years here, I think we've seen thousands of severe thunderstorm warnings, and we would be on your television almost constantly all the time for severe thunderstorm warnings. The other kicker with severe thunderstorm warnings, 60 mile an hour, or 70 mile an hour wind gusts and quarter sized hail. The vast majority of us will be protected by severe thunderstorms if you're off the roads and you're sheltered indoors. It's as simple as that. Uh, away from windows, you know, when things get menacing or if, 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 if the storm seems even a little bit more menacing than just a normal severe thunderstorm warning, take your tornado warning precautions. Go into that interior portion of your house. Go to the hallway. Go to the bathroom. Uh, go to the closet, wherever you feel safe, and, and, and monitor weather from there. So, again, those are all uh, pieces of information that we just try to share with you, uh, and, and we try to get as, as specifically local as we possibly can with some of these instances. Yeah, Jared, I'm going to quickly uh, step out and go firstly. I'm going to go see, I'm going to look and see what we're seeing outside here at the West Monroe studio, but also I, I want to uh, kind of check in on the way to the restroom and turn, see if we've got any damaging turn your microphone off. damage reports from make the uh, newsroom. Make sure you turn your microphone off right. on your way out there. Uh, yeah, Trey will join uh, Chase and I again here in just a second. Um, again, I, I generally think, Chase, that our severe weather coverage will be wrapping up here shortly. I, I, I can't imagine that this tornado warning stays active for for much longer, um, but uh, it can't pull it out completely. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I've been switching between our radar and the Jackson radar, looking at the velocity and the storm relative velocity, and it's just very messy. It's not really, I don't want to downplay it and tell everyone that, like, it's not there or to downplay it and be like, oh, we're okay. No, 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 that's not what I'm trying to say. It's just hard to see it and it's real messy. And so, like you said, it probably won't be too much longer before they do potentially cancel out this warning because it's just not nothing really to look at. It's like what we usually look at when we look at the velocity, when we see the green and red, it's just very messy. It's not really showing the things that we normally look at when we're right. looking for rotation with tornadoes. And so, like I said, between those two radars, it's just very messy, but they're keeping it active till at least the next 26 minutes as it goes to at least one o'clock and we're about 1236. So about 24 minutes left 
for this particular warning and they're going to keep it active potentially until one o'clock until they maybe cancel it but they want to do that just so they don't have to potentially reissue it they want to just make sure that you've got the warning you've had plenty of time especially sure. up in the area of East Carroll Parish from Lake Providence, the Epps area. You know, we've had plenty of time to get into your tornado safe place since it was issued almost about 20 minutes ago and had plenty of leeway time with that. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, again, one of those, uh, um, you know, just kind of notes is we continue to try to track this storm is, is again, erring on the side of caution. Uh, this storm has really, really come down on in intensity and organization and almost it's like the northern flank of this of this complex of storms has kind of split or, or maybe uh, uh, really the more reasonable explanation is this southernmost line or, or complex has kind of outrun what's happening to the north and west. And so as it outruns and leaves it, it kind of stretches all of this uh, activity out and it, and, it, and it leaves this kind of area um, uh, you know, left behind. So that's probably what we're running into right now. We're going to stay with you on air, you know, at 1237 in the afternoon, um, simply because there is this flashing red button. And, and like I said, we just, we, we err on the side of caution. And normally, and like I said, if you follow our tornado warning coverage pretty specifically, you would know that we would be hyper zoomed in somewhere here trying to point out a street or a road or a reference point, a town, a neighborhood, a subdivision, something to let you know, hey, if you're in this general area, you need to be in your safe place. But if you're in the warning period at this point, if you're in that red flashing box, uh, Delhi, Lake Providence, areas along Highway 65 in East Carroll Parish, you need to be sheltered. You need to be aware Away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible until this tornado warning is expired or it cancels. Uh, expire meaning it hits one o'clock and, and, and another warning is not issued. And uh, the National Weather Service can at times um, cancel them early. So just keep that in mind uh, as a possibility. Fingers crossed that uh, the conditions eventually get us to that point. But again, heavy rainfall, gusty winds. We really haven't seen a lot of lightning um, with a lot of these storms unless you get into the stronger segments and, and the stronger segments uh, are, are showing lightning and obviously that would indicate uh, kind of the most intense parts of uh, of these storms as they continue to trail to the north and east. I believe Oak Grove is not under this tornado warning. Um, it's close, uh, but again, it, it, this is going to be mainly focused for folks along Highway 65. Goes until one o'clock, but at, at the, the structure that we are right now, I can't imagine this, this tornado warning making it much longer. Yeah, it's definitely just hard to look at. And again, the tornado warning is a tornado warning, so we definitely don't want to downplay it. Sure. If you live within this polygon, respect it. If Once it's been drawn out, if you lie within it, you need to head to your tornado safe place. If you live in Epps, Lake Providence, you know, head to your safe place. Just wait for the duration. We got about 20 minutes left before they cancel it, and they could very well cancel it early. That would be a best case scenario. So just head to your safe place, wait for the next 20 minutes, it will potentially get canceled because again, we're not really seeing, like I honestly couldn't tell you where if it is there, where it could be, it probably around the Epps area. It's just too messy to really pinpoint exactly. You know, normally we'd be zoomed in, telling you what street, what, you know, exactly what road right. it would potentially be crossing on, but it's just too messy and too broad. So we're just really saying if you live within the polygon, yeah. it's been drawn out, just head to your safe place, wait for the next 20 minutes. It will get canceled, potentially be canceled early. That's the best case scenario. Biggest concern, I would say, outside of that warning box is the area looking at the live radar, Tallulah along Highway 65 stretching through Madison, Tensaw Parish, all the way down towards Concordia Parish. You know, they issued that new severe thunderstorm warning for you guys. Yep. Where radar has indicated 60 mile per hour wind gust. Hail has not been that great. It's just been shy Small, of an yeah. inch, about three quarters, which, you know, dime or penny size was so not damaging or anything. But this is what Chase really is talking about, seeing. by the way. This is, go ahead, Chase. I was just pointing out on radar. This is the the segment that he's talking about where the severe thunderstorm warnings have been issued. That's uh, uh, the the cons most concerning part for damaging wind gusts. Again, yeah, he the tornado of, warning. You can kind of see a little bit south of Tallulah. This is running into a Tensaw Parish. It's starting to bow out just a little mm -hmm. bit right there. And I'm zooming in near the uh, Nilton 
area and right. waterproof. You, know, you guys are about to pick up on some really heavy wind gusts, and once that rain starts coming down, then there goes your visibility and driving outside, outdoors. This is not going to be really recommended at all. It's just going the visibility is just really going to drop, and it's just not going to be ideal conditions at all. But, and we're about. also starting to get some some preliminary reports of some wind damage uh, back in the Gina area and back in the Dixie Inn, which Dixie Inn's well back to the west and uh, I believe technically outside of our viewing area. But uh, you're starting to get some of the damage reports trickling in of some trees down and things of that nature. Not necessarily what we would consider tornado damage or obvious tornado damage or anything of that nature. A lot of downed trees, like we've mentioned earlier, given the, uh, the, the conditions that are in place, a lot of this, simply put, is just probably some gusty winds, um, you know, and some soggy ground working together to uproot some trees. So um, that that's probably where we're running into some of the biggest uh, headaches uh, at this juncture. Again, the active tornado warning, as we have it zoomed in, uh, and I and I kind of chuckle at this point just because it's this is a really tough area to see anything, uh, and and. and uh, you know, I want folks to be sheltered, uh, but the bigger hazard right now is probably the heavy rain potential and maybe some gusty winds. But I think we've we've really lost a lot of, of storm organization with this particular uh, uh, tornado worn storm. Yeah, we're just not seeing anything. If you're just now joining in with us, you know, we're about uh, 15 to 18 minutes before the top of the one o'clock hour. And this particular tornado warning is set to expire at one o'clock and we're just about uh, uh, 18 minutes shy of that so mm -hmm. and it might be canceled early there's just not a lot of structure or organization with this particular storm it's hard to tell what street it's hard to tell what area but we can see at least where the main line it's just part of a squall line starting to move across but even that squall line is starting to weaken as well really the main squall line is from Tallulah stretching down highway 65 down through Tinsall and yeah, going through they're kind of pairs. separating it's and really separated and, yeah. and 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 we mentioned that earlier is is when you get kind of a dom dominant segment within that line um, and th that's what this main area right here has become it will just kind of come out just run out and leave everything else uh, these storms to the north uh, are moving much slower so that's going to cause some heavy rain concerns across southern Arkansas as you move to the I-20 corridor there's the tornado warning uh, the tornado warning storm that heads uh, uh, along and north of I-20 but it's this main segment here that's just running out and leaving everything else. So forward mo motion of this storm has increased a little bit, not moving in the uh, 20 and 30 mile an hour stage, now moving in the 40 to 50 mile an hour stage, moving quickly, producing maybe some 60 mile an hour wind gusts within the line. That does not mean a continuous wall of 60 mile an hour winds is just going to barrel through the Mississippi River Valley. That's not the case with severe thunderstorm warnings. It means that an isolated severe thunderstorm winds of up to 60 miles per hour within this line are possible, along with some small hail, heavy rainfall uh, uh, possibility as well. But again, keep in mind, our viewing area technically ends at the Mississippi River, and uh, we only probably have another, I would say, 20 or 30 minutes of that main cluster as it moves to the east. And, uh, and then still the tornado warn storm. Um, uh, it, there is still a tornado warning active um, uh, in, in portions of East Carroll and West Carroll and Madison uh, parishes. But like I said, that has really weakened uh, to a point of almost not being recognizable. Is that the same uh, circulation we were pointing out a couple minutes ago before I walked out that was kind of breaking up? Yes. And kinking the line? Yeah, yeah, and it's part, just kind of... It was part of the same system that moved through Richland Parish where we were looking at where there were strong signs of rotation and then they issued the warning, but within the past 10 to five to 10 minutes, it's really weakened. That squall line, it, you can't hardly see it anymore looking at reflectivity. I'd say our biggest concern right now outside of that tornado warning is to stretching on that 65 corridor from Tulua down through Tensaw Parish into Concordia, where we're kind of possibly gonna see some strong gusty winds of about 60 miles per hour with that line that's moving on through. And there's also so a severe thunderstorm warning that's also for the Bastrop area stretching into West Carroll Parish that will also potentially be picking up on some strong wind gusts as well. Probably gonna pick up on some P, or excuse me, some dime penny size hail. That's just less than an inch. It's not severe, but it's just, you know, might see some of that. We hadn't really seen a whole lot of hail uh, or hail damage with any of these storms moving on through. It's just really been those 60 mile per hour wind gusts and a couple of the tornadoes that have been issued. But I'd say this tornado warning 
for it's it's gonna stay it's gonna stay till one um so they're gonna keep it for the next 14 minutes we'll stay on air with you for the next 14 minutes just kind of highlighting not only the tornado warning storm but the severe thunderstorm warnings kind of recapping everything recapping uh if you guys want to go over the flash flood warnings let's just kind of recap everything over the next 14 minutes keep an eye on that tornado warn storm and and other the severe thunderstorm warnings and then we will plan for housekeeping purposes for folks that are watching us on air and online it looks as like uh, our, our coverage will likely end at one o'clock or somewhere around there at the top of the hour. Uh, so just kind of just keep that uh, in mind. So uh, we'll continue to stay with you on air. You can see the flashing red tornado warning. Stay sheltered if you're in that area, uh, regardless of what it looks like right now. And also uh, just keep in mind the uh, severe thunderstorm warnings to yourself. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, we, we got about 13 minutes left for this tornado warning. They're going to let it stay all the way to one o'clock to the top of the hour and we'll stay with you for at least that long just to keep you informed if you're just now joining with us you know if you live in the area of East Carroll Parish Lake Providence even Dale High is still included in the tornado warning but you know when we look at there's nothing really to look at on the velocity it's just not very organized at all and then when we switch to the reflectivity you know sometimes you can kind of see the reflectivity of a tornado you can start to see the rotation and you can start to see the inflow and outbound winds inside the uh, rotational shaft and everything like that but we're not seeing that it's just honestly there's no line there's not really anything to be looking at when we're looking at this particular storm so it is definitely weakened but they're going to let it go to at least one o'clock just to be on the safe side it's better safe than sorry and a lot, and a lot of people think oh it nothing happened well it's just a precautionary measure the last thing you want to do is issue one and cancel and then reissue because we don't want to take away or downplay the potential for it to become back up again because it is still possible but there's a lot of signs pointing that it is starting the weekend I, I really believe our biggest concern outside of that warning box are the severe thunderstorm warnings that are stretching from Tulua down Highway 65 if you're in the Tulua and going down uh, excuse me Highway 65 you do really need to not be out and about. This is, the visibility is no doubt dropping. We saw that here in West Monroe when that same line, same storm system pushed over, visibility dropped, and, and we could possibly start to see some of the roadways begin pining up. We were talking about the flash flooding threat. We still have flash flood warnings that are still in effect for parts of Union Parish stretching in Union County. That still includes El Dorado. There are no flash flood warnings in effect right now for Washita Parish in our main area here in M Monroe and West Monroe, but there is still some get down to the south and stretching into Wind Parish. Uh, Winfield is included in a flash flood warning right now, but right now severe thunderstorm warnings will be remaining in effect till at least two o'clock for down south around Concordia and Catahoula Parish. And for Tensaw Parish, your warning is set to be until 1.30. And then we have the tornado warning, which is set to expire in the next 11 minutes. And we're going to stay with you at least for the next 11 minutes until we let this warning expire. And once this warning expires, we'll kind of wrap things up and return to regular programming. But we're just going to stay with you just while the duration of that tornado is active. And Trey, I know you've been watching this as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the Brown, the Bass Trip area, they've Absolutely. been picking up on heavy rainfall as well. But, you know, yep. it doesn't look as you know heavy and strong as what we're seeing down further south from Tallulah along the 65 corridor stretching all the way down towards uh, Concordia Parish. Uh, correct and immediately in the minds of most viewers I would assume that when you hear the loud claps of thunder and see the frequent lightning and the torrential rainfall in situations like this rain wrapped uh, systems your mind immediately probably asks the question well, what's the tornadic threat? Are we going to see a tornado? Because that's the biggest and most intimidating. Well, speaking of tornadoes, we do have an update concerning the tornado watches around the area. And with that, we have seen the National Weather Service. Um, this is issued out of the National Weather Service, Jackson. They continue the tornado watch for, oh, there you go, Chase got it pulled up there. Whether you can see it as I read the counties, Ashley Chico, and Arkansas, which are both uh, in our viewing area. And then for Louisiana, Catahoula, Concordia, East Carroll, Franklin, Madison, Morehouse, Richland, Tinsall, West Carroll, 
and Adams. Yeah, keep in mind that those tornado watches will likely be trimmed away right. uh, rather swiftly in north central Louisiana. Uh, I'm talking about Union County, Union Parish, Lincoln, uh, Bienville, Jackson, Wynn, Grant. You folks probably won't be under a tornado watch all the way till 5 p.m. In fact, I would expect here in the next hour or two, y'all will be trimmed away. Uh, and the tornado warning has actually been expired early. Um, they've canceled that uh, 10 minutes early at 12.50, so that uh, warning is about to pop off of your screen. And um, we were expecting to send you back to programming at the top of the hour, but we'll actually be able to send you back a little bit sooner than that. So uh, again, we'll let that wa warning pop off the screen uh, as, as it's being expired. Uh, again, that storm has kind of lost all of its intensity uh, and organization in producing a tornado. We'll keep an eye on uh, uh, this cluster of storms to the north. And this cluster of storms to the south that should be crossing the Mississippi River, I would say in the next 20 to 30 minutes or so. Uh, and and uh, again, still some damaging wind gusts, some heavy rain to be had as well. So exercise caution on the roadways. Any final thoughts, Trey? Uh, quickly before we send you back to programming, I wanted to give an update. I did go down to the newsroom and ask about uh, if we've received any damage uh, potential or damage concerns from the area or viewing area. And thankfully, we haven't received any uh, damage reports aside mm -hmm. from those down trees Chase was talking about earlier and some road closures. So that's certainly something we want to see. You could have Good. the most menacing storm, but if it doesn't do some damage, that's what we want to see. Yep, and, uh, and and to be honest with you, as we get new faces in the Weather Center and Chase and, and, and Trey hasn't had a lot of tornado warning experience so far in his time here, it's a good opportunity to get uh, some some faces that you're not quite familiar with in severe weather coverage and and and, and let you get familiar with their voices and and, uh, and and you know just their mannerisms and how they how they do things as well as these storms continue to move east. So uh, again, uh, an opportunity uh, to to kind of stretch our legs in the severe weather department and kind of alert folks. Uh, uh, while also um, getting some education uh, in the weather center as well, which is always important. Uh, again, keep in mind these storms as they move off to the east. We'll keep an eye on any other storms. If a tornado warning is reissued for our area, we will certainly let you know about it. Uh, but right now, uh, as of right now, it looks like uh, our storms are going to continue to uh, fizzle. Trey, you guys have something? Are we going to get a new tornado warning? Nope. Um, they're just monitoring this base. I believe I was looking at, at something on the National Weather Service chat, but actually I believe that uh, it actually has gone back the other direction. So uh, I honestly believe that that warning is actually going to be canceled and we should be able to send uh, the good folks of the Arklamist back to their reg regularly scheduled program. Yeah. Just appreciate the trust of all the viewers. And, sure. and again, I'm just trying to, uh, that warning has not dropped off of your screen yet. Um, but that warning has expired. I, I don't know why it has yeah, not. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not come off the screen yet, but the Weather Service has decided to cancel that because, again, there's not, I mean, there's nothing there to right. indicate any sort of rotation or anything tornadic. Honestly, there's nothing there to indicate anything severe as far as damaging winds or potential for hail. It's just light to moderate rainfall happening in that particular area. Yeah, I know I said I was done after that last remark, but uh, this just popped up and I think it's worth noting. Uh, the uh, Weather Service Jackson has, has noted they still have the tour possible tag on the severe thunderstorm warning, but I just want to let you know if you are in Madison, Tinsall, or Claiborne parishes, uh, they have noted that there is uh, hail at 0.75 inches and winds topping 70 miles per hour. Okay. All right, so uh, again, this tornado warning has expired uh, and severe thunderstorm warnings remain in effect. If a new tornado warning is issued, we will join you back on air and online. Uh, but this will end our on air and online coverage for at least the time being. Stay tuned to NBC 10 and Fox 14. We'll keep you updated with the latest as we go through the rest of the afternoon.